630 and a quorum being present uh, I am calling this annual town meeting of 2024 to order our first uh, item of business is uh, the Pledge of Allegiance and Selectman Kaufman is going to lead us in the pledge would you all rise and remove uh, un, un, non-religious headgear the pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Everybody hear me okay? Um, I would also like to take, uh, it's, it's, it's rather unusual, I think, uh, for us to hold our annual town meeting. Uh, on June the 6th uh, and for some of us uh, most of us uh, we understand and know uh, that today is the anniversary of D-Day uh, and so what I would like to do is take a moment of silence this evening uh, just to recognize not only those that have given that last full measure on D-Day but those who were serving and their families so if we could just take uh, a few moments of silence thank you Thank you. The first, uh, the next thing that I would like to do is uh, identify uh, non-residents, uh, non-voting uh, citizens uh, of Brookfield who may uh, potentially need to speak here this evening. So I'm going to list uh, several names, uh, and then I'm going to ask uh, for unanimous consent uh, that those individuals be allowed uh, to speak here this evening. Uh, let's see, so we've got uh, town manager, and I would like to recognize and welcome uh, our new town manager, Ron Aponte. Uh, he's right here in the middle, so all the darts go right there. Right there. Okay, uh, we also have up here our uh, town council, uh, Michelle Randazzo. Randazzo. Uh, sorry, Michelle. Uh, we have our accountant here that needs to be uh, recognize Chief Blanchard is is over there. Uh, he's non-resident, but and he doesn't expect to speak tonight. Uh, but I still want to make sure that we get him we get him out there. Uh, the principal of the elementary school is here, uh, and I would also like to sort of name her as someone that may have to address town meeting. So, is there? I I don't believe there are any others. Am I missing anybody up front here? No, superintendent's already covered. And you are, oh, highway superintendent. What's that? Pete the Clark, okay. All right, uh, anyone else? So if there's no objections, I would like those individuals, I would like to give those individuals permission to speak here at town meeting. Is there anybody that objects to that? Very good. Those individuals will be allowed to speak. What I would like to do next is just uh, read the rules. I get my. I got everything all in the wrong place here. I just like to read the rules so that everybody sort of knows what they are. Uh, most of you know a lot of these rules already, but it's always uh, a good reminder. Uh, I do a lot of meetings, and uh, I always remind myself. So, uh, rule number one: there are limits to debate. Uh, each member who wishes to speak on a motion has no more than two minutes, and I will have a timer up here. Each member may speak two times on any given motion, but may not speak a second time on any motion until everyone else wishing to speak on any given side uh, has spoken. You'll, you need to come to the microphone up front here, so if you want to line up down the center, uh, if you want to speak, and sometimes that happens, people just line up, uh, go ahead and do so. Uh, time limits are, are overall. If you ask a question, the answer comes from your time. So if you come up and they ask a question, the answer comes out of your time. Rude, disrespectful speech will not be tolerated. Also remarks attacking the character of an individual, including statements that someone has an agenda 
or ulterior motives will be called out of order. Uh, we have Chief Blanchard is actually on duty here this evening. Normally it's constable, constables, but Chief Blanchard is, has the duty this evening. So uh, if, if, if you fail to uh, listen to what I have to say, uh, Chief Blanchard may, uh, I may ask Chief Blanchard to usher you uh, out of the meeting. All right, applauding, cheering, booing, or other expressions of approval or disapproval are not permitted. Please let people speak and don't cheer or shout or boo or anything. Thank you. Um, the previous question, which is a motion uh, to close debate or stop debate. Um, once made and adopted, that is going to end all debate. In the past, there were occasions where someone would make uh, a motion at the microphone and there would be a line. Uh, and even though the, the motion was adopted, all those that were standing in line still had an opportunity to speak. That will not happen. If somebody makes it to the microphone and makes a motion uh, for the previous question to end debate and that motion is successful on a two-thirds vote, motion the debate will be closed, everybody sits down, and we're going to vote on things. Okay? Just want to be clear. Uh, in debate, I will attempt to do my best to alternate between supporting and opposing views. That doesn't really work out altogether so well, but I'm going to make an attempt to do that uh, if it seems to be sort of lopsided. Um, we are here to make decisions about the town of Brookfield. Decisions are made by making motions, debating, and voting. No one should speak unless they are engaged in one of those three things. You may have a question, but it should be a question that is either leading to a motion to amend something uh, or, or that's it. I'm not going to tolerate a lot of questions if, there's not, if it's not leading to a motion. Okay, you got to get a motion on the floor uh, to, debate, to debate things. You should, you should look to address the town meeting either in support or in opposition to a motion. So when you get up here, I am in support of this motion or I oppose this motion and this is why. You can certainly, again, you can certainly ask questions during debate, but please keep questions and, and debate focused on the motion and hand. If someone has stolen your thunder, so to speak, and made the point that you wanted to make, please refrain from repeating. If a point has been made, I may ask you to either bring a new point or to stop. If you think I'm doing something wrong, which sometimes happens, um, you can't hear or something else is going wrong or I've done something wrong, you can raise what's called a point of order to let me know. You don't necessarily have to say point of order. You can just simply call out and say, I can't hear you or there's something wrong. Okay, uh, I, But point of order is the official way to look at things. Hang on one second. Oh, uh, finally, if uh, in the past, uh, when we've come across an article where no motion is made, uh, we have used a so-called motion to pass over. Uh, there is no such motion. Furthermore, if there is no reason for town meeting to take any action when there is no motion, there is, there's no reason for us to take any action if there's no motion, okay? So uh, if, if if you know that you're not going to be, if, if you're responsible for an article here, uh, and you know that you're not going to be offering a motion, just don't offer the motion. It'll just save us time uh, and energy. All right. So um, I'm going to save my comments for uh, the, the budget uh, when we get to that point. All right. Any questions on those rules so far? Anybody have any questions or not sure about what I just said? Good evening, Mr. Moderator. John Holcraft, 26 Allen Road. I'd like to know if you could reconsider if people are at the microphone and they take the time to get up to the microphone and they have something to say, and the more people talk about an article, the more we are educated here at this meeting tonight. So if there's seven people or ten people here and they want to speak and someone moves the question, you think you can reconsider and let those people speak like no. we used to do in the old days? No. All right, thank you. Thank you. you. Any other questions? All right then. Article number one. Are you doing articles? 
Uh, I move that the town accept the annual report of the town officials as printed. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved to accept the annual report of town officials as printed and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. That's a pretty weak aye there. Uh, maybe it's just we're too hot in here or something. And I don't really know, but nevertheless. All right. So now we're on to uh, article number two, uh, which is uh, the budget. So I need a motion. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $10,482,383.69 to defray the expenses of the town for the ensuing year as shown in the fiscal year 25 budget as printed in the annual town meeting budget. Second. A motion has been made to adopt the budget in the amount of $10,482,383.69. Is there a second to the motion? Second. There is a second to the motion. Hang on one second, I gotta fix something here. All right, okay. So, the way that we're going to work this is I'm going to, um, I'm not gonna read through all of this. I'm just gonna go page by page, and if you have any question on any given line item, um, all you need to do is, is, is get up to the microphone or say I have a question, uh, and you can ask your question, or it should be leading to, and again, uh, your question really should be designed to if you want to make an amendment to the to the number that is there Okay, uh, you may be thinking, you know, I'm not sure I want to vote for that as high as it is You may want to make it lower, but you may want some reasons for why it's as high as it is uh, And so you could ask that question why it's like that uh, But then I want you to be thinking about sort of making a motion to amend the line item so that everybody is clear uh, your the budget is on the is in the back of the budget the booklet that you have uh, and the numbers that we are using is the gray column the select board recommended all right everybody with me so far all right so the first page has line numbers and it's line numbers are way over on the left uh, line numbers 1 through 24 is there anybody that seeks to make uh, a motion to amend any of these line items? Question. You, you, you really do need to come to the microphone to. Mr. Moderator, through you, I have a question. Um, on that back page, Rudy Heller, 8 Central Street. Um, the gray column has that number you read, but the advisory board has a lower number. Can there be an explanation of why the two aren't the same? Thank you. Yes. Thank uh, you. Through you, Mr. Mallory? Go for it. All right. If you uh, take a look at those two budgets, there are some nominal differences this year between the select board and the advisory budget. The preponderance of the differences is that the select board budget is at a 4% um, cost of living increase for the salaries for the uh, municipal employees that are not covered by the school or the police contracts. Okay, and there are some other nominal differences associated with overall wages in the treasurer's office, some differences amongst the reserve, uh, re reserve fund funding levels, uh, and there are actually a couple of probably typos that are differences between the two budgets. Okay, uh, overall, the select board budget leaves us roughly $62,500 between our operating budget and our levy plus our other sources of revenue that we, that we typically refer to as levy limit, though it's a bit of a misnomer, okay? The, the uh, advisory budget has about $76,500 headroom to that limit. So they're very close. There are some nominal differences. The bulk of that difference is in the wages difference between the two budgets. Sir. Yeah. Christopher Kelleher, 36 Lake Road. I'd like to make a motion that on line item number 21, we've allocated $558.48 to the advisory committee clerk salary. I'd like to move the town to pay those funds to Sarah Campbell. 
Um, e- oh, I thought we were doing one through 21 of the first page. You're looking for line 21. Yep. And your motion to amend is to... My motion is that we uh, that we pay that we pay out that five fifty eight forty eight to Sarah Campbell. Uh, that that is that that's out of order. We can't. It's out of order. Yeah. Okay. Any other uh, items uh, of concern with line items one through twenty four? Hearing none. And by the way, if we're going through this. And you go back and or you know you're like, hey, wait a second, I I, I want to rethink line num- number 14. Uh, please, you know, just let me know and we'll, we'll backtrack and we'll and we'll and we'll do it. Okay, all right. Uh, line numbers 25 uh, through 49. The other thing that I I, I should have made clear, uh, I, I believe, and the, the advisory board and selectmen cor- correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but only those lines that have an account number associated with them are lines that we can amend okay they'll have results further on down but only the ones that so if you see the line number over on the left then there's account numbers only the lines that have an account number are ones that we can amend okay just want to be clear is that okay you can amend any of them I'm game Uh, Line items 25 through 49. Okay. Uh, Pat Washburn, 12 Maple Street. I have a question on the increase of the treasurer's wages. That's number one. And number two, I'm also questioning um, the... uh, Never mind. That's the one I'm questioning. Uh, there's a question on treasurer's wages. Um, somebody want to explain? Uh, it, is there a specific aspect of... Well, I want to know why there's an $18,000 increase in the wages. Uh, th- uh, through you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, yeah. uh, apparently, Ms. Washburn is not familiar with the annotation that indicates that's a negative 18000 and we're actually reducing treasurer's wages by that amount from the prior year. And that's because we're reducing the hours in the office. Okay, but the advisory board is asking, is allocating that they say it's 51600 and the select board is looking for 62400 Why is such a big difference? So the difference is that we calculated, I believe, at, I want to say 25 or 26 hours per week, and I think that the advisory did it at 20, but I'd have to check with them. That, that is correct. We had, we, had, we had a difference in the number of hours that we as an advisory committee thought that the treasurer needed and the selectmen at a, at a different at a different set of numbers as far How many as the, hours out, is the, the treasurer out, working? The, the hours. I'm sorry. How many hours is the treasurer working now? The accountant would be able to I think to answer that specifically. Hi, Lori Barkas, town accountant. Um, we have an interim treasurer right now who's working for us part time. She's working um, anywhere between 18 and 24 hours a week. Um, we haven't hired a permanent replacement for the treasurer that left us a few months ago yet. So the treasurer that worked for us before, how many hours were Four- they working? 40. Um, we made the decision to lower the position to part time. We're just trying to determine how many hours part time is for this town. And how many clerks does that treasurer have? None. And we're not going to hire a clerk. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep. Point of order. Yep. Mr. Moderator, are we not going to go through every line like we always do? No, I'm just going to go page by page. You got a question or you want to make an amendment? Go ahead. Otherwise, we're just going to go through it. Yeah. Mr. Moderator. Yeah. To do with the assessor's position, our latest principal assessor. Could you give me a line item number on that? So it's line item 25 through 31, basically. We've made some changes. As a result of the principal assessor retiring, we're going to move up the clerk approximately... 24 hours a week from 15 hours a week, but we're losing the principal pass- principal assessor's position, and we've subcontract the rest of it to do inspections, to do building permits, anything related to the assessor's office. So I would like to make that 
line item that the assessory advisory board recommended of 90,980.09 to 70,980.09. Uh, say that figure, 70,000. We're going off of the select board, one. The select board yeah. one. Oh, okay. So, excuse me. I would like to read $71,603.08. Okay, let me make sure I have this correct. You would like to amend line item 31. That's correct. To read $71,603.08. That's correct. Is that correct? Yes. All right, is there a second of the motion? We need to There's a second of the motion? The All right, uh, would you like to speak to your, uh, would you like to speak to why you're doing that? I thought I did. <laughs> okay, but, that's fine. But we, if you're done, that's uh, fine. I, you know. Sure, if you. Uh, yeah. All right. Through you, Mr. Moderator. So the, there's there's going to be a restructuring in the assessor's office, um, and specifically, we would be reducing line 26 by twenty thousand dollars. And um, and we'll be funding a portion of the clerk wages uh, from the principal assessor wage account. 21,000. All right. So you took away 21. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Moderator, um, yeah. I would just, uh, my question to you, my question to you is line 31 in the budget is a total and it is made up of the sum of lines 25 through 30. And so my question to you is for clarity for the floor, could you please ask the members here to not address, not make changes to a total, but to make changes to the individual lines the, that make up the total. And uh, Ms. Coughlin has clarified, um, Mr. Chafee's motion was to change the subtotal and she's told us I, which I, ones go. You, you would like me to restrict any amendments to particular line items that have an account number rather than a total. Well, to the uh, more specifically to the non-total line items because there are some lines here that do not have account numbers because they're new. Yep. Specifically, I'll call your attention to line 45. Yeah. That is that is a new account and yeah. it is a subtotal and so therefore yeah. it should I, be modifiable. It's like unfortunately there is no account number, so there was no account number to put into the budget when we made it. I, I'm, I'm going to let the select board, um, they, they've already told me that we can amend any line uh, here. No. Uh, you can't amend the totals. You have to, we vote a line by line budget. You have to vote, you have to amend individual lines. You can't amend a total. Okay, so which lines can we amend and which lines can we not amend? You can amend anything except for a total. The totals are just subtotals. And this is a total number that he's trying to amend, isn't that correct? Yes. You can't amend a total. We vote a line by okay. line. So right I'm going to give you. Okay. I'm so going to give you the line items. I just need a minute to go over okay. them. Okay. Let's just let's just hang on. Um, this is what I thought, and I want to make sure that we're very clear on what we're doing. Individual line items within um, sort of a, a block of lines, like total assessors. We've got you know assessor stipends, principal, assessor wages, all those sorts of things. You can amend those lines, but you cannot amend the total. So uh, you reduce this line, uh, Mr. Selectman, by about $20,000, it that's, looks like. Uh, what I need you to do is go through line by line and tell us which lines you would like to amend uh, so that uh, the total is reduced. Is that that's that's what you're looking for? That is my request, Mr. Martyr. Very good. And and if I if I may point out that at the end of a group, if it's at, for example, it says total assessors, that indicates the lines of total versus compared uh, compared very good. to that's very good line 64, which is also bolded but sits by itself. That is a that line 64 would be a modifiable number. Yeah. So yeah. in general, I, the description I, is total. I, I got it. I'm, I'm Thank good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, while they're sort of trying to figure out what to do with lines uh, 25 through 30, uh, is there any other lines uh, on this page, lines 25 through 49, uh, that people would like to um, make an amendment to or get some information on as to whether they want to amend? I don't hear any. Uh, so I'm sort of inclined to go to the next set of lines. 
which I'm going to do. All right. I'm turning the page. We're going to come back, so keep your finger on the page. Um, anybody have any uh, thoughts to amend uh, lines 50 through 70? Lines 50 through 70. Hearing none, I'm moving forward. Lines 71 through 95. Yes. Mr. Mr. Moderator, I have a question. Yes. You yep. said through All 70, right. but that group okay. goes through 73. All right, so you're going to have them. Okay. Is there a reason that we're doing it by page? Is the object of the town meeting you're at zero. Studying the budget to be expeditious yep. or to make zero. good decisions? Both. And so yep. why can't we do it line by line? Uh, because I've conditions. already stated how I'm going to do it, and that is the end. Mr. Moderator. Yes. May I go through you to ask the town meeting a question? No, you may not. Yeah, well, yes, you can. Yeah, what's, what's your question? Through you, Mr. Moderator. I would like to know from all the people here who has had an opportunity to review no, every that's, line No, that's not a question. Not a good no, question? Everybody, no, it's not. So we come here without knowing anything, and we have to vote on 25 lines without an opportunity of looking at everyone. That's your position, sir? Excuse me, Mr. Moderator. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. You you are all done for now for that question, so okay. thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Moderator. Uh, who's who's speaking? Oh, there we go. If I could speak to the, the town. Two years running, again, the advisory committee and the select board put in hours and hours and hours going through this budget. For the last two years, we have had town uh, publicized presentations two to three weeks prior to this meeting, of which the first year, six people showed up. The second year, okay. nine people no, showed up. No, no, I'm, I'm done. No, I'm not oh, going to go said, there. There's been plenty of time I, to look at this. It's been mailed out so, also. No, I'm all done. No, okay. please stop. All right. Are there any questions on lines 71 through 95? All right. Is the, are, the, is the, are you guys ready for those lines? Okay. We're going to go back to uh, lines 25 through 31, uh, and we're going to get uh, what I think is going to be or should be uh, a group of amendments or one amendment for a group of lines, shall we say. So I would like... Line item 25 to read $1,800. Line oh. item 26 to read $0. Line item 27 to read 35000 28 to read 1000 29 2500 and 30 31303 dollars and 8 cents to total. Repeat that. 31000 what? 31303 point zero eight. To have a grand total of seventy-one thousand six hundred and three, oh eight. There is a motion to amend. Um, I'm just going to say I'm lines twenty-five through thirty. Uh, line twenty-five. Uh, we would the motion is would like it to be eighteen hundred. Line twenty-six zero. Line twenty-seven thirty-five thousand. Line um, twenty-eight one thousand. Line twenty-nine twenty-five hundred. Line 30, $31,303.08. Is there a second to the motion? Second. All right. Uh, is there any debate or discussion? Sharon Mahoney, 130 Long Hill Road. I, through the moderator, I have a question for Mr. Chafee, and I would like to know why we're increasing expenses to the tune of 30000 and change. Thank that you. Is that is the fee for the subcontractor that's now going to do it. Instead of having a line item of 61946 to pay the principal assessor that retired, that's what it would have been, we have now subcontracted it out to the tune of 31000 to cut that position almost in half. That's exactly the answer I was looking for. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Any further debate or discussion on the motion to amend uh, line items 25 through 30? Yep. 
By the way, I, while you're making your way up, can everybody hear Richard in the back okay? Okay. It's fine. I have a hard time hearing him. I don't know. You know it's That's like maybe because I'm on the other side of the microphone. You're just getting to that age. Yeah, I know. I get it. Okay, go ahead. So, Mr. Moderator, to uh, Mr. Ch Selectman Chafee, you are contracted for 31000 to have uh, a subcontractor to come in to do the assessor's work. But that, is that totally eliminating any other expenses? Because you have a line item here of 5315 for expenses for the assessor's office, which would mean that you would use your entire expense budget <coughs> For just the contractor, so uh, there's no, there wouldn't be any wiggle room if you had some, you know, expenses. So the contract that we have is a sliding scale, and it depends on how many building permits are issued, how many inspections they do. We anticipate it's that subcontractor fee would be twenty-one thousand two hundred and fifty, and we have other fees with that to total the thirty-five thousand. Or not 25,000, 31,303. So okay. we kind of loop so, two of them together. Sure. Can, um, you, Mr. Moderator, through the Board of Selectmen, um, can we um, separate that those items in the future for our budget so that we know yes. that um, one amount is the contractor, one amount is the actual expenses that the, the assessor's office actually uses? So yes. we have an idea without having to ask for the figure. It's right there. We, we can talk about that. But we're really? not going to commit to it here. No. Well, I, I do want to let you know that the primary assessor leaving, the principal assessor recently left. We've been scrambling to hire someone and to get a subcontractor in. So I apologize, but we just met on this on Tuesday to kind of finalize it. That's so. fine, but I think in the future it would be nice if it was, you know. Agreed. Sub, you know, Agreed. subdivided in the budget sure. so that we can see what we're actually spending on subcontractors. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, yes. Mr. Moderator, I do just want to caution everybody that when we start subdividing the budget to, there's like this weird yeah. balance so, we have to set. I, so, 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 yeah, so no, and anything I, stated I, here doesn't commit to Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Economy. That's something for the select board to take up outside Absolutely. of this meeting. That is not a that's not a part of this particular meeting. You've heard the request, and you folks now can take that take that uh, take that to your office and and figure out what you want to do with that. Anything else? We have uh, an amendment uh, <clears throat> on the floor. Uh, for line items 25 to 30, uh, 25 being 1,800, 26, 0, 27, 35,000, 28, 1,000, 29, 2,500 dollars, and line number 30, 31,303 dollars and eight cents. Uh, is there any further discussion on the motion to amend those numbers? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Uh, the ayes have it. The motion to amend has been adopted. All right. We left off, I believe, uh, on page number four. Uh, and just to kind of go back through it, lines number 71 uh, through line 95. Is there anybody uh, that has a question or would like to amend uh, any of those line items? Hearing none, uh, I am going to move to the next page, which is lines number 96 through 116. 96 through 116. Anybody have any thoughts about amending or questions of why something is? Hearing none, uh, I'm going to move on to lines numbers 117 to 138. Line numbers 117 to line number 138. Anybody have uh, any uh, thoughts about amending any of those numbers? Hearing none, I'm going to move to lines 139 
to 163. 139 to 163. Yeah. Hi, Shelby Hill for Lincoln Street Extension. I have a question in regards to line 160, the library director wages. Um, from what I could see, there was, there's a COLA for 4.0 for everybody, for all the wages, for everybody across the board. It looks like the library director is at 3.2, so I'm just calling, I'm seeing if there's any clarification on that. Mr. Moderator? Yeah. Uh, through you, the select board selected 4%, which is above the COLA. Okay. The library director's contract, I believe, stipulates that uh, she will receive COLA, which is 3.2. So that is what the number that is indicated in the line item. That's, okay. That's the best of my knowledge. Okay. Okay, I think that's it for now. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else uh, on line numbers 139 to 163? Hearing none, I'm going to move to lines 164 through 186. 164 to 186, sure. Shelby Hill again for Lincoln Street Extension. Line number 168, the longevity director. Currently it looks like they're, it kind of looks like she's getting, um, Brenda is getting an increase of 66.7, I'm gonna ask to see, I don't know if this is possible or not. It looks like the 2,500 that for uh, FY25 is 2,500. That is actually, it includes the longevity assistant directors for $1,000. So I didn't know if that, could that be broken down at all? So that, it, cause right now it looks like it's just for the director and instead of the director and the assistant. So it kind of looks like she's I getting more. It just to longevity library. Yeah. Um, Do we have an answer? Yeah, per, per the account, she says that the most straightforward way to address that would be to change that to reflect just library longevity, take okay. the director name out of it so that sure. it's clear it's for all the applicable yeah. okay. library employees. All right. Okay, that's fair. I just wanted to make sure, because it does look like it's a really large increase, but she's not actually getting right. that full thing. Okay, awesome. I think that's it. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on line numbers uh, 164 uh, to 186? Yeah. Mr. Moderator, Tom Regan, 6 Mockingbird Lane. Uh, for line 168, I move that we revise the description from longevity director to longevity library staff. Hang on. So there's a motion that's been made to strike the description longevity director, insert uh, longevity library staff. Is that, is that what you want? Is there a second of the motion? Second. Uh, hang on one second. We don't have a motion for that, right? Okay. Go ahead. Debate. Right. Make your argument. Uh, just if you want to. You don't have to if you don't want to. We can consistent this with the discussion that happened, let's make the change happen. Thank you. There you go. Any further discussion uh, on the motion to amend uh, the description uh, of line 168 from longevity director to longevity library staff? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. no. The ayes have it. Uh, the motion is adopted. Um, who said no? Are you? Is he? A, is he a citizen? Yes, I'm a Brookfield resident. I just found this place that said he knew the woman behind me told me I couldn't vote from this chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And and that's that's accurate, correct? He's he's. Yeah, I'm okay. Good. 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 No. I, 
I can't see you. So it's like I'm looking at a pole. I like to look at somebody when I'm talking to them. That's fine. Thank you. Just wanted to be sure. I heard it coming from over there. I'm like, oh, wait a second. Is somebody cheating over there? All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, so uh, we have amended line 168, the description to longevity library staff. Is there anything else in line numbers 164 to 186? Hearing none, uh, line numbers 187 uh, to 203. Anything further? 187 to 203. All right. Uh, I don't hear any, uh, so I need a uh, I need a number. Uh, so I forgot the main motion. Uh, the motion is to adopt the budget uh, as 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 amended uh, for a, a total of ten million dollars, four hundred and sixty-two thousand, three hundred and eighty-three dollars and sixty-nine cents. Is there any further discussion uh, on the budget? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The, the uh, budget has been adopted. Thank you. All right. Article number three. Mr. Up Moderator, I move that the town transfer $9,371.06 from free cash to pay the following prior year's bills. Catalyst Tax and Cama Inc. $8,500 for assessing software. Local IQ New England $146.06 for newspaper hearing and uh, notices. Atlas Technical Consultants $725 for repeat well testing. A motion has been made that the town transfer $9,371.06 from free cash to pay the following prior year's bills as they are printed there, Catalyst, Tax, CAMA, uh, Local IQ, New England, uh, Atlas Technical Consultants. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. This will require uh, a four-fifths vote. Okay, which is 80% of you got to say yes if we're going to adopt this thing. Okay, all right. Is there any discussion on on the motion? The dollar amounts. So Catalyst Tax and CAMA Incorporated, it's $8,500 for assessing software. Local IQ New England, 100. Oh, the total. I'm sorry, $9,371.06. That, that right? Yep. All right. Any debate? All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Uh, we're going to pay last year's bills. Um, article number four. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $40,000 from the Water Department Water Surplus Account to the Water Department Water System Capital Expense Account. A motion has been made to transfer $40,000 from the Water Department Water Surplus Account to the Water Department Water Systems Capital Expense Account. Is there a second? second. There is a second. Uh, is there any discussion or debate uh, on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number five. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $50,925 from the ambulance receipts reserved fund to fund the fiscal 2025 ambulance expense account. A motion has been made to transfer $50,925 from the ambulance receipts reserved fund to fund the fiscal 2025 ambulance expense account. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? on transferring 50,925 bucks from the ambulance receipts reserved fund to the to for to fund the fiscal 2025 ambulance expense account any debate hearing none all those in favor say aye, aye. all those opposed say no the ayes have it the motion is adopted article number 6 
Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transferred $278,831 from the ambulance receipts reserved fund to fund the fiscal 2025 ambulance wages account. Could you please give me that number again? $278,831. A motion has been made that the town transfer $278,831 from the ambulance receipts reserved fund to fund the fiscal 2025 ambulance wages account. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Uh, is there any debate? Uh, on transferring 278,831 bucks from the ambulance receipts reserve fund uh, to fund the fiscal 2025 ambulance wages account. Any debate? If you, you're going to need to come to the microphone. I know. It stinks. Although I kind of like it. Mary Fagno, 7 Green Street. Um, why is the number in the book different than what she um, stated? Got an answer? Why is the number different? Oh, you, you, you're going to have to. Yeah, I'm sorry. You got to. I'm pretty uh, just <laughs> <laughs> You need the exercise. Come on. Well, I know you don't. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> that amount was uh, submitted several months ago, and it didn't include the 4% raise. And there's uh, been an increase in the ambulance calls, so that accounts for the other 3%. Okay. So it's a total of 7% increase. Okay. Any further, any further debate or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number seven. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer 18000 from Ambulance Receipt Reserve Fund to cover a deficit in fiscal year 2024 ambulance wages account. The motion has been made to transfer $18,000 from the Ambulance Receipts Reserve Fund to cover a deficit in the fiscal year 2024 ambulance wages budget. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Is there any debate on the motion to transfer $18,000 from the Ambulance Receipts Reserve Fund to cover a def deficit in the fiscal year 2024 ambulance wages account? Any debate? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion is adopted. Article number eight. Mr. Moderator. I move that the town transfer $25,000 from free cash to purchase protective clothing for the fire department. Motion has been made to transfer $25,000 from free cash to purchase protective clothing uh, for the fire department. Is there a second? second. I heard a second. Uh, okay. Is there any debate on uh, spending $25,000 on, on protective clothing for the fire department? Yes, Mr. Moderator. How many, uh, how many, how many of... How much clothing is how many clo is this clothing? How many firemen is this going to take care of? And uh, had, didn't we support this a couple years ago? Also, I just want to know how much money we're spending on the firemen's clothes, and how many firemen is this going to take care of? Do we have a we have someone that's going to answer that, Chief? Through the chair, essentially, without being too facetious, all the firefighters. Because as the year goes on, stuff does need to be replaced. Requirements now are in place at a federal level, and because we're an OSHA state, everything has to be replaced every 10 years anyway. And we don't replace it all at once, otherwise that would be a lot more than 25000 But as the year goes on, we put new members on. They need a helmet at $400. They need a hood at $200. They need two pairs of gloves at... $180 each. They, lose, they rip a pair of gloves. The coats are uh, just under 2000 The pants are just under 2000 Firefighters cannot attend, pardon me, 
uh, certain trainings without that gear being compliant. They definitely can't go into hazardous conditions in those things. So the simple answer on it is it affects everybody because as the year goes on, they're going to need gloves. They're going to need boots and everybody. There are some, some firefighters on staff that don't have the proper equipment right now. And we're also anticipating as the year goes on. We know exactly how old the stuff is and we can add 10. So we're looking forward through that. We're using some state money to take care of some needs now. But as the year goes on, we have helmets that need to be replaced. Again, at 400-ish. Um, maybe that's wrong. It ain't cheap. Um, and again, it just as it goes on, we just need to stay ahead of it to keep the firefighters at a point where they're protected. And also they can participate in training in compliance with Mass OSHA. Okay. That's about, that's about it for time. Good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further debate on uh, transferring $25,000 from free cash to purchase protective clothing uh, for the fire department? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number nine. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer 82000 from free cash to the equipment replace repair account to fund future equipment repair or replace needs. A motion has been made to transfer $82,000 from free cash to the equipment replace slash repair account to fund future equipment repair or replacement needs. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Um, is there any debate? Uh, on the motion to transfer eighty-two thousand dollars from free cash uh, to the um, to the equipment replacement repair account uh, debate. Sean Mulligan, seventeen River Street. Uh, I see that this um, is not recommended by the advisory committee uh, by three to two, and I'd like to hear the from an advisory board member about their objections to this. Thank you. We're looking for the objections, um, so I believe. Yeah, Sean, uh, I think the issue is we were more interested in the, um, the, the actual wording of the language versus the 82,000, because it was originally came to the advisory committee in the town as a requirement for a larger air compressor so they can refill the tanks all the time, and we wanted it allocated to that. And this just says future equipment repair, so it can be spent on anything. That was the only, that was the reason for our, I mean, the, the need is there, and we wanted to make sure it went to that need. So I think that was uh, just the, it's the difference in the wording of the article, I think, that we had the challenge with. That makes sense? Or does that take your question? All right. Any further debate? So... Can the advisory committee, oh, this is Sherry Zitter from Lake Road. Can the advisory committee um, put in an amendment to change the wording to your liking, or does a citizen have to offer an amendment? So, Mr. Moderator, through you, yeah. if I may. So, it, it could be amended by either the advisory committee or by somebody from the floor, but I, I would like to speak to why the verbiage was changed to what it is, okay? So the initial issue before both ourselves and the advisory committee was the replacement of the current air compressor at the fire station that loads their bottles. It's currently operating, and, and Chief, you correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's roughly 35 years old, or, 20. or is it older than that? 20. 20, it's 20 years old? 25, okay, 25 years old. As a 25-year-old compressor, if it quits on us, it's unlikely that we can find somebody to just repair it. Okay, a lot of the parts are out of service, that sort of thing. This does, however, give us the flexibility that should it fail, it could be repaired instead of replaced. Okay, uh, or if it makes it through the year, the funding is still there on the article, still there in the account. The question really before the town meeting today is, once this money is in the account, yes, it can be moved at a simple vote of the select board. And the typical procedure is that before the select board would do that, whatever issue was taken up by the select board would be passed to the advisory, at least for them to advise on whether 
we should do it or not. Okay. So the question before you is, do you trust us to spend it with the precedence to the compressor, but if something else in our fleet of a lot of our equipment is not shiny and new in this town, decides to blow up instead, it gives us the flexibility to actually do the work that we need to do to support the town. So you can either amend it, tie the hands, or leave it as is. Uh, Sorry. Pretty much at this point, t t t time, time, time is done. So, no, I don't, I, you know, whatever. Any, any, any. What's that? I, it, I didn't realize it was. No, that's the, that's the, no, that's the, uh, no, that's, that's your, that's your timeout. Okay. It's your timeout sound. I figured I'd rather do that. It's easier than me having to, I, I feel guilty like shutting people down. Like that's right. That's right. It's, it's much easier. That's okay. Now it's I much know. easier, you know. So anyway. All right. Any further debate? Uh, my question is, is why are we taking it out of free cash and not raise and appropriating it? I mean, there hasn't been any mention of how much free cash we have tonight. So that would be nice for the people who are out here voting is if we knew how much free cash the town has before we go and decide to spend any of it. So I guess that's my question is to the town accountant, how much free cash do we have before we spend some? We... Um, the certified free cash was $544,490. And how much do we have in there before that? Is that No, all that's of it? that's your that's starting all balance. Of it. That's what exactly what was okay. certified. We had spent none before we got here tonight. Okay. So why are we taking it out of free cash and not raising an appropriate? So prior to making the amendment to the budget of 20,000, we only had about 62,000 of excess levy capacity. So that would be the maximum possible amount that you could raise and appropriate. Now we have about 82,000 and that's if nothing else changes. Um, but the state budget numbers are still not finalized. So to raise and appropriate every last penny at this point is still not a great idea because the state has not finalized their budget, which is where a large portion of our revenue comes in from. And I understand from the state that the numbers are going to be much lower this year than they have been in previous years. They are, and we, I used the mid um, numbers that have come through so far, so I'm not using the high numbers because th the high numbers never get passed. Right. So... So leaving I, some excess levy capacity is a good idea at this point. So why is our budget so high this year that we are, we're within $60,000 of our levy limit? So th we've already adopted the budget, so... I, but these articles are also included in this budget. So when they figured out the $60,000 bill, they included all of these numbers either being raised and appropriated, coming out of free cash, when they're saying to us that we only have sixty thousand dollars to play with, so yes, so, it, it is a, a it is a legitimate question. Why are we so, so close in our budget? So, uh, again, you, you're talking about a very specific item about a budget. This is not the budget. We've already decided on the budget, and so I'm not going to take any further discussion on the budget. And your time's up. Okay, but anything that's raised and appropriated from these articles is part of the budget. This is free cash, if I understand it. Yes. This one particular article. Okay. Okay, so what I'm asking is why is our levy limit, why are we so close to our levy limit? I don't, I don't no, that's, that's outside the... the that's outside. I don't think so. Point is, of order. I'm, it's a legitimate question and okay. it deserves an answer. I, I'm, I'm sorry. It is outside the the relevance of the okay, motion so that the is on next the floor. Okay, so the one that comes up that is a raise and appropriate, I will ask that question. Because then it will be appropriate. Okay, you're done. Thank you. All right. Is there any further debate? Is there any further debate on a motion to transfer $82,000 from free cash to the equipment replace, am I in the right one? Replace repair account to fund future equipment repair or replacement needs. Any further debate? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. no. Oh, I like that aye out there. Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, the motion is adopted. Uh, article number 10. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer from free cash $11,000 to purchase a thermal imager for the fire department. 
Motion has been made to transfer from free cash $11,000 to purchase a thermal imager for the fire department. Is there a second? There is a second. Um, is there any debate? Ladies and gentlemen of the panel, illustrious moderator, my name is Gary. I live in Allen Road. Uh, could you could you step a little closer? There you go. My name is Gary on Allen Road. My question on the thermal imager is twofold. Number one, has it gone out to uh, for bid? Number two, related to that, what model are they anticipating getting? And number three, what security devices are they going to utilize to prevent it being stolen or misused? Those things are dynamite. You get someone with a thermal imager coming after you, you better hope you have good insurance. Does anybody have any answers to his questions? Could you just, I'm going to pause this. Could you just repeat the questions? Uh, what model thermal imagers okay. are they going to get? Model. Yeah, binocular, yeah. monocular. Yeah. yeah. Um, bidding process, I think you mentioned. What? Did you mention bidding process? Yeah, sometimes you put things out for a bid. Okay, okay. You know, yeah. And then. And third, what type of security arrangements are you going to have for. <laughs> All right, security. For that particular unit. Thank you. They're, they're Chief. in high demand. Yeah. Chief, do you have any answers to the questions? Do the best you can. It hasn't gone out to bid because I don't have the money yet. Um, when it does go out to bid, I would have the option of either using bid or using a state bid list where vendors and models are, are mm -hmm. vetted. Um, I can throw out a couple names, but that wouldn't be appropriate. But And these are Sorry, fire service specific long. ones. Um, I know that law enforcement has other u uses for them. This isn't the case. Uh, they, so you're looking for a broad spectrum? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, it's it's a handheld thing. It looks like the old ones look like camcorders, and I just lost half the room by saying camcorder. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they're handheld, and they're just picking up heat signature either yeah. directly or through something. It's not like law enforcement would use to track yeah. somebody. Um, that's more of a well, and hold, hold on, hold on. I, I, I don't yeah. want the discussion going on. Right. Just let them let them finish out here. You yeah. can come back. You you got some time. I'm not. I'm not. I just. But yeah. It, I'm done. It, okay. It hasn't gone out to bid because we don't have the money. What about I security on the unit? Security on the unit would it would only be used at fires. Um, we try going back to Columbine. We try not to use our equipment for law, enforce, law enforcement endeavors. You know, it's a whole. Pasacumatatis type thing, but yeah, it's it wouldn't be used for a search. It would be used for a search for a missing person or somebody ejected from a motor vehicle, but not somebody that's fleeing a motor vehicle uh, accident or stop or anything like that. If that's if that's where you're looking more of a privacy security rather than lock and key. I think I think what he's really interested in is the value of this thing is very high, and he's worried about it getting swiped. I mean, it, it, did I get that wrong? Or it, it'll be mounted in a charger in the vehicle. The vehicle is un, is fully attended when it's on a scene, and it's locked up in the station when it's there. So we got a lot of stuff that's even so more expensive. Have to so get a safe to hold that. probably not a safe. It will be mounted in the vehicle the same way the current ones are. So okay. Any further debate on the question? The motion is uh, to transfer from free cash $11,000 to purchase a thermal imager for the fire department. Is there any further debate on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion's adopted. Article number 11. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $24,318.26 from the balances of several fire department accounts to a fire department building repair and maintenance account for maintenance and repairs of the building include pest control and remediation as printed in Article 11 of the annual town meeting warrant. Motion has been made to transfer $24,318.26 from uh, the balances of several fire department accounts to a fire department building repair and maintenance account. 
uh, for maintenance and repairs of the building, including pest control and remediation, uh, as printed uh, in Article 11 of the town meeting warrant. Uh, I have those numbers in front of me. I assume all of you do. Um, is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any debate? I would like to offer an, an amendment to that, if I may, because I just saw the language not to reopen that argument. Peter, could you speak into the mic? Yeah, thank you. That's good. Get good short. and close. Okay. I would like to change the wording, starting with the word to, quote, to a fire department building repair and maintenance account for the maintenance, repairs, and improvements of the building. Or take any action. Well, no, you don't do that. Um, pest control and remediation weren't part of it. We're, we're pretty much rat free, so that, that hold, wasn't hold, part hold, of it. Hold, hold, hold on, one, hold on yep. one second. Let me just make sure that I got what you're doing here. Yep. You I'm, want you I'm want changing it from maintenance re and repairs to maintenance, repairs, and upgrades, and I'm limiting the term pest control and remediation. Oh, I don't know how that made place. it through. It so hold on one second. Yep. I just want to make sure that oh, we okay. get this correct. Okay, all right. So repairs details. Details uh, of the building, including Ma uh, before include for maintenance repairs, maintenance repairs and upgrades of the building. Stop. And upgrades. Sorry, of the building. Period. So you want the motion to read, you want to amend this thing so that it reads uh, transfer $24,318.26 from the balances of several fire department accounts uh, to a fire department uh, building repair uh, and maintenance account for maintenance and repairs of and upgrades. Maintenance and repairs and upgrades of the building period that's what you're seeking to do that hold on one moment yes. town council's got my ear yes Hang on. This right here needs to go. Where's my thing? Go right there. Okay. All right. So. Hang on. So. Um, there's just a motion to amend uh, the wording of this thing, obviously. Uh, town Council is telling me we need to do something in addition to what you're asking us to do. So what I'd like to do uh, is sort of combine the two because they're sort of related, all right? And so what Council is telling me is that she would like me to move the words, and this is for everybody, she wants me to move the words as printed in Article 11 of the Town Meeting Warrant from where it is to right after uh, the department, Fire Department Building Repair and Maintenance Account. All right? So the motions, <laughs> sorry about this, the amendment, or if the amendment is adopted, which we haven't even gotten there yet, but we're looking to change this so that it reads that the town transfer $24,318.26 from the balances of several fire department accounts to a fire department building repair and maintenance account as printed in Article 11 of the annual town meeting warrant for maintenance, repairs, and upgrades of the building. Is there a second to that motion to amend? Second. I hear a second. Is there any further debate? Someone from behind you and then. Is, is this a new account? Is this a new account that we're starting? Yes. Okay, how many, I mean, we get, how many accounts are we gonna have in this town? We're gonna have an account for this, that, maintenance for this, this building, that building. Um, what is the purpose behind having this, uh, a special account on this one? 
Mr. Moderator, through you. Yeah. So, Mr. Moderator, this actually simplifies and does a bunch of account cleanup. Uh, uh, if you notice, there are uh, five previously voted at annual town meeting accounts that have residual funds. What this does is aggregates all those funds into a single general purpose upgrade maintenance and repair account to handle additional things at the fire station without costing the town an additional penny that has not already been voted at a town meeting for the purpose of upgrading the fire facilities. We already allocated we already allocated the money for the repairs. This is money that is left over. Just put it back in the general fund. We don't need another fund. We have so many funds now. It's unbelievable. Peter, why do we have $24,318.26 left over from last year's budget? And you're asking us for $11,000 for a um, thermal thing, and you're asking us for money for the uh, more equipment, and you're asking us for money for this, but you got $24,000 left from last year that you didn't spend. How can, come? Can you answer that? Uh, uh, get to the microphone, please. Sure. Thank you. Uh, if I may, we did due diligence when we ended up with $1,723.02 in repairs. We came in under budget on overhead doors because I had out, went out to bid. Uh, we came in under budget on the generator. The defibrillators, by getting as many as we did, we got a price break on that. So, um, And we assessed needs as we went along on that. So... We were able to save money and spend your money effectively, so we end up with money left over. We could have turned this back to free cash. We wouldn't have seen it for another year, and I still would have needed work done on the station. So, Did you reduce your budget this year, Peter, for the 2025 year, knowing that you, um, were, you were that, short? That question's already been answered. No. I mean, it, that question's already been answered. We adopted the budget that had that number did in there. You, it's a legitimate question. Did you reduce your budget for the 2025 year? It's clear that he did not. For these accounts that you want to transfer the money out of? Go ahead. Through you, Mr. Moderator, these were not uh, uh, operational budget accounts. These were funds that were established by warrant article votes for explicit capital expenses for one-time expenses not ongoing budget needs and so we're repurposing the one-time funds that were not expended for those one-time instances okay. into a general fund for this year thanks All right. mr moderator that's it no we're done my opinion no, is, I'm sorry. is that no you're you're done excuse me you're done please sit down i'll let my husband answer the question ask the question is there any further debate The motion on the floor is to transfer $24,318.26 from the balances of several fire department accounts to a fire department building repair and maintenance account as printed in Article 11 of the, of the annual town meeting warrant for maintenance, repairs, and upgrade of the building. Is there any further debate? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Uh, article number 12. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $10,000 from free, ca free cash fund to the center line painting for the town roads. Motion has been made to transfer $10,000 from free cash to fund the center line painting of town roads. Is there a second? I hear a second. Uh, is there any debate on the motion to transfer 10,000 bucks from free cash to fund the center line painting of town roads? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. We're going to paint some town lines, lines and town roads. Article number 13. Mr. Moderator, I move uh, that the town transfer 79,000 from free cash to fund the road re uh, construction and reconstruction account. There's a motion that's been made to, uh, that the town transfers $79,000 from free cash to fund the road construction and reconstruction account. Is there a second? Second. 
There's a second. Uh, is there any debate on the motion to transfer 79,000 bucks from free cash to fund the road uh, construction and reconstruction account? Mr. Moderator, Don Taft, 20, Lane 21. I'd like a clarification on this since the, uh, it says it's $54,000, which is for the paving on Green Street. The paving on Green Street was part of a uh, project contract that was funded in FY24. The project did not go up in uh, expenses. I'd like to know where the $54,000 went that was voted on and the contract was signed. Can someone answer that? There was never $54,000 ever allocated to Green Street. There was chalk that it was going to be paid for out of ARPA, but there was never an actual Board of Selectmen vote to allocate the funds from ARPA. So the $54,000 is our, the town portion to finish the Green Street project. Any further debate? You got about a minute. So this is coming out of the road construction fund now? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So it's taking away from um, mm -hmm. highways funds for this year? Uh, the motion is to take money from free cash and put it into the road construction and reconstruction account. M M yeah, just want to make sure. Yeah, Mr. Moderator, yeah. just yeah, just to clarify. Uh, uh, no. Mr. Mr. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> This is fiscal 25 money we're talking about. I thought this project was to be concluded for the residents of Green Street, like now. I can clarify that. We still have $55,000 in the road reconstruction account right now. So this will replace the money that we're going to spend on Green Street. So it really has nothing to do with Green Street. You've got that money already. Right, but the 54,000 extra that we're putting in is to replace the money we're gonna spend immediately. Thank you. So crap. We still got twenty five thousand. How come <clears throat> how come we're short with the twenty five thousand? What I understand when this grant was taken, it was supposed to be a hundred percent to take care of Green Street with the drains paving and, and doing the water lines over. Now we're coming up short saying, Oh, we can have money coming out of free cash to pave it. That's with the understanding I was told when you guys did this grant. Now you're changing it all. And where's the twenty five thousand? What's what's that for? You've told us what the fifty-four thousand is. Now, what's the twenty-five thousand for? That you're short. The twenty-five thousand is a, the regular allocation that we normally put into the road reconstruction account every year. So that's just the standard money we put in every year to have. Um, the fifty-four thousand, from reading through everything we had from the mm -hmm. grant, was always supposed to be the town's responsibility. Now, we usually vote separately for the town, to get the highway, to get road construction, bridge repair. That's usually a line item by itself. It's kind of getting mingled in here with Green Street here on this grant. That's why I'm, I'm just kind of wondering why this is taking place. We put in the additional information that Green Street was 54000 just to make, have everyone make sense of the 79000 we were putting in, which was the fifty-four plus our standard allocation that we normally do of twenty-five to cover the money that I'm going to use out of what is left in fiscal year 24 because I'm going to use all of the money that we have remaining. Okay. Herb Chafee, uh, if you don't use the road reconstruction money to pay for bills, what are you going to do with the $79,000 that's going to be on top of what's in there now? So the money that's in that is the seventy nine thousand that is going to go into the road reconstruction account, which will become the new balance in the account because I'm going to spend all that's in there right now, is at the discretion of the highway department. I only approve their bills for payment. So I guess the question that I'm asking is, if you do not have to use road reconstruction mm -hmm. on Green Street to pay bills, what's going to happen with all that money? Well, I have to use the $54,000 to pay for the paving, which is scheduled already. So that will leave us a balance of 79000 if approved tonight, because I'm using the 79000 isn't available to us until July 1st, because this is a fiscal year 25 town meeting. So, so I'm, we a, currently have a balance of $55,000 in the account. So I'm emptying their account out right now to pay for Green Street, because the project is scheduled to go, I believe, in a week. 
I've asked before, how much money do we have in uh, Chapter 90 for the highway department? That I'm not sure. The highway superintendent yeah. so, would have so to So I can answer. I can give you that number, Mr. Chafee. Okay. So there's four hundred and fifty four thousand dollars roughly in Chapter ninety right now. So why didn't we do a project request with Chapter ninety money with this grant? I don't I don't believe it was eligible, but the highway department uh, super. I guarantee it's eligible. Because it's been done before in Brookfield with Chapter 90 in a grant. Okay. I, I don't know. You have any further questions or? I don't think we should vote for this. Can town council? Okay. No, it doesn't no. Any further, it's, it's an opinion. any further debate uh, on the motion? The motion is uh, to transfer $79,000 from free cash to fund the road construction and reconstruction account. Uh, is there any further debate? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. no. Uh, the ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number 14. Mr. Moderate, through you, I'd like to have a hand count on that motion, please. Very good. I, I just want to ask everybody, all those in favor, just stand. If you're in favor, just stand. I don't want to count right at the moment. Just stand. All right, thank you. Please sit down. All those opposed, please stand. I need a count. What do we got? Opposed or four? What's that? So uh, uh, oh, everybody, please sit down. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just wanted to get a visual of what it looked like. I still believe my call is correct, but there is a, somebody does want to count. So my counters, uh, I'm going to need you to come forward. Just come on up here and. Uh, and get yourselves ready. Uh, and then I'm going to ask everyone who voted yes. Uh, yeah. Every, okay. All those in favor, please rise. Twenty-nine and twenty-five. Okay. All those opposed, please stand. Don't forget to reset your counters to zero. Four voted yes, 27 voted no. The motion is adopted. Article number 14. Mr. Moderator. Oh. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer 40,000 from free cash to purchase an updated fuel recording system which would replace the current manual system. Motion has been made to transfer $40,000 from free cash to purchase an updated fuel recording system which would replace the current manual system. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Uh, could the members of the advisory board please keep it down? Uh, all right. Uh, a motion has been made and seconded to transfer $40,000 from free cash to purchase an updated fuel recording system which would replace the current manual system. Is there any debate on the motion? Uh, Mr. Chafee had his hand up. I don't care. You guys figured out. Go ahead, Mr. Holker. Um, could we hear from the highway superintendent on this, please? And my question is, uh, what's the purpose of this, and, and why is it such a high cost of uh, 
allocating for our fuel? Um, I actually have a two-part answer to this, Pete Florio, Highway Superintendent. I am in favor of the system because it will provide accountability, security, and also um, for budgeting purposes, we'll have a better idea of what we use for fuel. Currently, we use a clipboard at the highway garage to keep track of gas and diesel. We have no idea what police and fire are using, so we're constantly filling the tanks. So at least this way, we would have accountability where we would know what's in the tanks. The price tag on this, I have not had time to do more research on it. I'm confident that we can get it at a lower price. Um, but again, I would have to put that out uh, to get proposals. Um, so I don't know who put this amount in there. I know there was one quotation for it, uh, which it does seem high to me. But overall, it would be a worthwhile system uh, in, the, in, the, in the long term. Does that answer? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. I, for one, am not in favor of this. I have a 1,000-gallon fuel tank at my place. I use a notepad to keep track of it. It's a pretty simple system. $40,000, if we're losing 10 gallons a, a month, we could never recoup this cost. There's an annual cost to have this as well once we do this. There's a software fee. This is not something the town needs. There's, there's, better, there's better solutions. If we want to maintain the gasoline and know what's being spent, we get rid of the gas station entirely at the highway department. We give each policeman a card to go to the Cumberland Farms. We can keep a very accurate accounting system. We'll know which policeman is using what for fuel for gasoline. And there's very other little gasoline that's used in town. I am not in favor of this. Okay. Herb Chafee again. Uh, we got a gas tank down there and a diesel tank. So there's two tanks so everybody knows. The gasoline has a computer system on it, which is constantly has to be looked at, repaired, and everything else, and it's very costly. To me, I think it's not worthwhile. And what's wrong with the pump that's there now? The accountability has been good for years. Now all of a sudden it's bad. You know, my understanding the locks have been changed so it's accountability with the department heads that have the locks and that have the keys for the locks um i'm sorry we've got somebody up here that's that's uh, are you all set i mean you still got more time you got you got you know another minute you, could, you, you know go ahead your turn. are you answering her no you're up matthew graves matthew graves yeah. lane 23 <laughs> is this covering both gasoline and diesel pumps yes. looks like it's yes because I was gonna say the gasoline pump has had a lot of issues in the past with that computer system so why are we going but again like rich said 40 grand is a lot to spend even if we're what are we losing for fuel do we have an estimate on what we're losing for fuel that we're trying to cover can somebody answer that I don't Anybody know an how much fuel we're losing? Do, do you have an answer, Richard? I'm sorry. <laughs> Currently, even with the gas system, which is computerized, we have no idea because it's not reporting. So we have no idea the answer how much. Is no, they fuels. don't know. Yeah. Um, are you all set? You got more time. A minute. I know for the ambulance and fire fire departments both, we do keep a very detailed log every time we get fuel, which I, is probably just a communication thing that we need to improve between fire and highway. We also do use gasoline as well in fire. Okay. Anybody else who wants to speak once? Richard, I'm sorry. I gotta, okay. We got to get through. No, I'll be patient. Come on. Go ahead. Chief? Mike Blanchard. I, I was unaware that there was um, a question on what the police department uses for gas. We have a, a three-digit code for every cruiser, and we punch that in in the gallons. If it's not getting reported, then then that's, that's an issue. But I was unaware that you guys were not getting our fuel mileage or whatever. I don't know that that's an issue. 
I have a question for Pete. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Eaton was 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 had risen before Chief. We'll we'll come to you next if that's all right. Kermit Eaton, 13 West Main Street. There seems to be a lot of uncertainty and disagreement. I move we uh, pass over this article until we get more quantifiable data on uh, how much is used, how much it's going to cost. All right. So hold on a second. So you, what you really want to do is postpone this indefinitely, which will kill it, uh, and then we'll take it up at some other time if, yes. it, if it's so if if the meeting so desires. So the motion to postpone indefinitely needs a second, uh, and it is debated. So is there any second to the motion? There is a second to the motion, uh, and it is debatable all the way down to the merits of the question itself. So you can continue, Kermit. I mean, if you want to continue speaking, no, it, it's just in favor of your motion to postpone indefinitely. Uh, I, I'm not for against it at this point because I get yeah. confusing yeah. comments so that's yeah. my my yeah. issue yeah that's what the motion to postpone indefinitely is yeah. is exactly for all right um, uh, let's right right here I want to say in speaking to the highway superintendent today this was not his recommendation from day one it was the prior town administrator we don't even know why she brought it up it wasn't an issue. We have cameras on the building on all corners. It's not my opinion we're losing an ounce of fuel or gasoline. I trust all the employees. I don't think we have an issue. I think it would be a major waste of $40,000. That's it. Okay, Mr. Holcraft. Yeah, my question is, uh, uh, did you say we're passing this over or postponing it? Because your rules of engagement at the beginning of the meeting said we cannot pass over any article. Is that true? She made a motion. That's a good question. Yeah, it's a very it's good a, question. It's a very good question, oh, yeah. Mr. Holcraft. I'm, pay I'm, paying, attention. I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention. <laughs> I'm paying attention. All right. So, <laughs> okay. She did try to make a motion to pass over. That is not a legitimate motion. However, what she was really looking to do was postpone it indefinitely, okay, which is a legitimate motion. It's in almost every single manual of parliamentary procedure that I am aware of. If you can find one there it's not, let me know, and we can talk some more about it. So it's a legitimate motion. Hang on. Okay. Uh, and, and I want to make sure that everybody understands what this motion will do. Okay, it basically just kills the article. We'll just, it'll, it, no money will be spent and we'll move right to the next article. Okay, uh, so go ahead. Does that answer your question no, first? Yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not disputing what you were going to do here, but I'm disputing that you said we couldn't pass over articles. And, and we so are in not your, doing that. In we your are, manual, well, you said, not, no, I, we can't do it. I, I, now I you're think saying I've we can. I've it clear that this is not a motion to pass over. So, so what is it? You're postponing it? Postponing it indefinitely. All right. Okay. It is a legitimate so, motion well, in every single parliamentary manual that I am aware of. All right. So we're going to play with the words tonight. Okay. All right. Sean Mulligan, 17 River Street. Um, this sounds like an expensive solution to a problem that we haven't really identified. So I'm, I'm opposed to it as well. <clears throat> <laughs> right here. Yeah, I, we, we uh, the advisory committee did uh, interview and talk with the uh, uh, acting uh, director and the uh, uh, clerk at the highway department. So the 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 premise isn't that anyone's stealing anything. The premise is to better manage costs for the town going forward as gas and oil prices continue to go up, down, all over the place. And the, and, 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 and the reality is the system they have now is an old DOS-based system. If the computer ever were to die, you would lose every, all the data you have. And, you know, hopefully people will still have their their you know those the the pad and pencil and they'll be able to recreate but right now it's a very tenuous system and it's barely barely holding on but again it's more about future managing future costs when to buy diesel when to buy gas you know knowing how much exactly is in the tank so if the prices are look high today maybe we can wait a week and get another penny or two off and when you're buying thousands and thousands of gallons that's that so it's all it's it's all about managing costs now is forty thousand the right number or not i don't really know and it sounds like our new super wants to look uh, you know into it more but i just want to give you that background as to why it came up in general the dollar amount is a separate animal but that's why it's on a warrant um 
did did you want to did, did you want to speak to this question? I'm sorry, I totally I totally blew you off. I'm terribly right. sorry about that. No, so my question was for Pete. I just asked. So currently combined, the expense if you add your diesel fuel and your gasoline fuel is fifty five thousand one hundred and seventy five dollars. So my question is: Is the goal to eventually s find out and separate into and have the police create an expense and a line item for their gasoline, or are you going to keep it? We could at go, this fifty five thousand one hundred and seventy five. We could go either way with that, but that's also an estimated number okay. until we have an actual um, gallon amount, you know, usage per year. Okay. Uh, that would help us get a, a better handle on budgeting purposes. Okay. So, and you're expending this, correct? This fifty five thousand right now. I am not sure at this point. Okay. Um, I'm not sure exactly where we're at uh, budget wise. Yeah. Yeah. Postpone indefinitely. Postpone indefinitely Like I said, the motion to postpone indefinitely is a debatable motion, and it is debatable right down to the merits of the underlying question, which is whether or not to spend $40,000 out of free cash on an updated fuel recording system. So yes, the questions are legitimate. I, I, okay. Has your question been answered? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is there anybody else that wants to speak to this? Um, yeah, go ahead. You were, you were, yeah. So we want to spend $40,000 on two pumps right now. So every eight to 10 years, we're going to spend another $40,000. Because that one that's down there right now is probably about 10 or 12 years old for the gasoline pump. So, and we spent 30 grand on that. Okay. So, all right. I want to make a correction. So the 40 grand is not for the pump itself it's for the system also so we're they're upgrading the computer system also so i just want to make that point it's not just the pump all right mr chafee our annual usage is fifty five thousand dollars we're going to spend forty thousand dollars to track it and then we're going to pay for the software every year after that are we crazy uh, again, Selectman Chafee, I also have uh, to look into other companies where there is no annual fee. Uh, okay. We, we uh, can I'm sorry. also you're, you're get all cards. Set. We can also get cards at Cumberland Farms for free. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, okay, Richard, are you all done? Yes. All right. Go ahead. Can I make a motion to move the question? Uh, yes, you may. <laughs> there is a motion uh, to move the previous question, which is ultimately to close debate. Is there a second? Second. All right, it requires a two-thirds vote, okay? Uh, so all those in favor of closing debate, so what's going to happen here is if we vote yes, debate's going to be over, and we're going to vote on the underlying question of whether to spend 40000 bo 40, bucks on this updated fuel system, uh, all right? So if you want to close debate, you'll say yes. If you don't want to close debate and you want to continue, say no. All those in favor of closing debate, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. We are going to vote on the underlying question, which is to postpone indefinitely the motion to transfer $40,000 from free cash to purchase an updated fuel recording system, which would replace the current manual system. If you vote yes, this motion will be dead and we will move on. If you vote no, we will continue to debate this question and vote again. So. If you want it to die, vote yes. If you don't want it to die, vote no. Everybody clear? All those in favor of postponing this motion indefinitely, say aye. 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 All those opposed to postponing indefinitely, say no. no. The ayes have it. This motion is postponed indefinitely. We are moving on to article number 15. Mr. Moderator, I yep. move that the town transfer $3,000 from free cash to purchase gravel for the purpose of making various repairs for private roads that meet the town bylaw requirements. Motion has been made to transfer $3,000 from free cash to purchase gravel for the purpose of making various repairs for private roads that meet the town bylaw requirements. Is there a second? 
Uh, is there any debate on the motion to transfer 3,000 bucks from free cash to purchase gravel for, for the purchase of making various repairs to private roads that meet town bylaw requirements? Mr. Chafee. I don't believe the 3,000 that we appropriated last year has been spent, but I could be wrong. But uh, if, if it hasn't, I would like to pass over the article or, or make a motion to postpone indefinitely. Postpone indefinitely. There is a motion uh, that's been made uh, to postpone this motion indefinitely. Is there a second to the motion? There is a second. So, uh, as we did before, the motion to postpone indefinitely is fully debatable down to the merits of the question. Uh, if you if you are in favor of postponing it, if you are in favor of killing this motion, you will vote yes. If you are opposed to it, you will vote no. All right. So we are now going to hold on. Hold on one moment. I'll respect your point of order in a moment. Okay. Uh, so we are now going to uh, debate the motion to postpone indefinitely. A, post, a point of order has been made. Mr. Chafee, or Rudy Heller, 8 Central Street. Mr. Chafee said, if we have not spent it, then I'd like to postpone indefinitely. Have we spent last year's money or not? Please, dear count. The money from last year has been spent. Oh. So that that was a that was a kind of a cheat. That I won't let you do that again because that wasn't a point of order. That was just a question. So go ahead, Mr. Chafee. My understanding that uh, we have a lot of asphalt grinding piles in the town of Brookfield. There's one behind the highway department, and there's one down on Quaybog Street, which is over probably well over a thousand yards of uh, material. Why are we buying material? Why can't we use asphalt grindings on private roads? I'd like Are to you going to answer that. the question? Yeah. So later this evening, we'll talk about the asphalt grindings. If it passes, we would like to use the asphalt grindings at the cemetery to replace some of the roads to have it more in keeping instead of new asphalt. Uh, I've been working with Mr. Eaton on that, and he has some information, so we'll talk about that going forward. So I'd be cautious about allocating the asphalt grindings that we have towards the private roads. That answer your question? It does answer my question. Maybe we ought to talk to Lynch in East Brookfield here that's doing that project that they're going to be grinding that road and see if we can get some more asphalt grindings for nothing. Is there any further debate on the motion to postpone indefinitely uh, by, uh, of, of, of sp transferring 3000 bucks from free cash uh, for gravel and uh, uh, gravel for the purpose of making various road repairs and private roads, the town bylaw requirements. Uh, so, is there any further debate on the motion to postpone indefinitely? Uh, Tom Regan, uh, through you, Mr. Moderator, uh, Mr. Chafee, uh, given the conditionality of your motion to um, to not consider this, I forget the exact term. Um, do you still wish to continue that, even though we have expended the money from the last year? The motion's been made and seconded, and we're debating it. He can't withdraw it. I'd not, I, I, I will finish. My question is, would he, if, he, if he wishes to change his mind, would he like to state that publicly, or would he like to continue his support of his motion? Thank you. I would like to change, I would like to change my mind, knowing that the money has been spent. Uh. I, I firmly believe that. So, okay. so if we want to continue with this, I'm fine to take so, the vote on oh, oh, it as on, is. Richard, hang on one second. Hang on one second. Uh, I, I, I want to hear what you have to say. Uh, but it, it, this is what's going to happen here, right? If, if we want to withdraw this motion, I've got I to gotta, I gotta take a vote of the town to withdraw it. I think we're better off just sort of making a vote on the postponed indefinitely. And if it fails, then we'll be back to square one. Okay? Uh, you do what you want to do. But you're going to have to make a motion to withdraw your motion to postpone indefinitely. We'll need a second, and we'll have to vote. So I make a motion to withdraw the motion to move indefinitely. Second. There's a second. There's a motion to withdraw the motion to postpone indefinitely. There is a second. Can't remember if it's debatable or not, but I'm not going to debate it. All those in favor of withdrawing the motion, say aye. 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 All those opposed to withdrawing the motion, say, say no. The ayes have it. The motion is withdrawn. We are back to the main motion to transfer 3000 bucks from free cash to purchase gravel for the purpose of making various repairs for private roads that meet town bylaw requirements. Is there any further debate on this motion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. We're going to transfer 3,000 bucks of free cash to purchase some gravel. Article number 16. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer 25000 from free cash to the library building repair and maintenance account for maintenance and repairs of both two Lincoln Street and 18 Common Street buildings, including pest control and remediation. A motion has been made to transfer $25,000 from free cash to the library building repair and maintenance account uh, for maintenance and repairs of both 2 Lincoln Street and 18 Common Street buildings, including pest control and remediation. Is there a second? second. I heard a second. Is there any debate uh, on the motion to transfer $25,000 to repair to sort of maintenance and repair of the library buildings? Um, I want to ask the advisory committee through you about um, repairing a building without making it ADA compliant because the library annex right now has no ramp and so any public meetings we have there are not ADA compliant. Can someone answer that question? Through you, Mr. Moderator. Yeah. So there is a effort afoot to apply for grant funding and to get an assessment done based on the historic nature of the building as to how much has to be done for it to be considered in compliance. I don't know the status of that of that grant at this time, but we can follow up and get back to the townspeople through the website about what the status is of that grant application. Uh, so the intent is there was a plan to use funding that was already available in order to address like three out of the four uh, concerns relative to bringing that area into compliance. However, they held off on starting the work because of the grant opportunity because they may be able to do a more thorough job by addressing it through that program. So we're going slow to go fast. So are you saying, can I ask yeah. through you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Moderator? So you're saying that um, we're looking, it's, le it's legal to start the work even if you may not get the grant or you have to you're, no. you're appropriating this money and waiting for the grant so, so you can do the repairs so and make it ada compliant so so this money is not is not aligned onto ada compliance this money is just to do general maintenance of the building to keep it serviceable and to keep it in good order okay um the the grant application the intent of that funding would be to go ahead and bring it in either into compliance or identify what the appropriate plan is to bring it into compliance and with that plan be eligible to, to potentially apply for even more funding so that it can be brought into compliance leveraging funds from outside you know our free cash in the town meeting so um, there is work apace trying to get the appropriate funding to bring it into compliance Thanks. all right <clears throat> Any further debate on the motion? Is the library director in the house tonight? I have uh, questions for her. I believe the ri library director is here. However, I did not recognize her earlier. Is there any um, uh, objection to allowing the... You're, you're not a citizen of Brookfield, are you? I didn't think so. Any objection to allowing a, a non-citizen library director to speak before the town mm -hmm. meeting? Hearing none, ask your questions. Okay. Uh, First of all, why are we putting lipstick on this pig of a house? Um, uh, excuse me, please, please. No, okay. that's not appropriate. Well, that's my opinion. Um, it may why be, are we but not it's inappropriate language here. No, that's nothing wrong with that. Put it on your yellow sign. No, uh, I'm going to talk about it right here tonight. Never mind the yellow sign. Um, why are we spending twenty thousand dollars painting this house? when we could almost get it sided, get some good siding on it, put some nice shutters on it, we're gonna paint it, and then three, four years, we're gonna paint this, the house again. Uh, why don't we take and put it into something permanent on this house? And we should, what are you gonna do with that 40,000 we just saved? Maybe we should take some of that money and use it for the ADA on this building. Uh, <clears throat> so the, 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 the question is, why are we painting when we could use other siding materials, I think? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, uh, Come on up, Brenda. I'm uh, not going to bite you. Uh, <clears throat> so we have Brenda Menerville, library director. 
We have looked into painting and we are looking into siding. We're not sure which way we're going to go, but we are. It's completely separate from the ADA issues. We are going through the channels to do the um, planning and assessment that the town did in 2018. We're going through the same process there. Uh, someone from the advisory board. Brendan, excuse you're, you're me. speaking to the questions, correct? Yes. Yeah. Could, could you itemize when you presented as far as the 25,000, what were those line items that you were looking to, to spend out of the 25, not just the global amount, but what, were the what was the breakdown so that Mr. Holcroft will have a further idea um, of I the 25,000? It says right here. Right yeah. 20,000. It breaks it down right here. Right, we're right getting but you're, you're, you're mentioning painting as the whole thing. There's other things in that. It's not the whole thing. Right, but that's what I'm... Strictly about the painting right now. What, what? Painting or siding the house. You, know, you take that money from painting and put it to siding. But is, is, was that the, that okay. wasn't the entire twenty five thousand? My question to you, Brent, is why are we taking twenty thousand dollars and using it to paint the house when we can almost side the whole house for twenty thousand? Okay, and put I new shutters up and make yeah, it look I, nice. Yeah, that was the question. So, uh, and if I heard the answer correctly, uh, there really wasn't any certainty as to painting versus siding versus anything. Is that correct? That's correct. So, does that answer your question? No, because it says right in here, 20000 for painting. Now, we, you're asking the town for money, but you don't know if you're going to do painting, siding. You don't know what you're doing, but you want money from the town. It's a, it's a summary. Uh, so, co town council is telling me it's a summary of an article. It's not, it's, it's not a stipulation of how the money is going to be spent. So what the library director is telling us is that it is uncertain as to whether it's going to be painting or whether there's going to be some siding or what's going to be done with regard to that but something is going to be done okay but don't you think the townspeople should know what is going to be done and what the cost is going to they're, be they're about to make that decision okay. thank you you're done all right is there anybody here from the historic uh, uh, council that can answer whether you can do siding in that historic region? Is there? I can answer that. Um, there is not a restriction. Okay. There's none. Okay. Any further debate? Uh, <laughs> On the motion to transfer 25000 bucks from free cash to the library building repair and maintenance account for maintenance and repairs of uh, both two Lincoln Street and 18 Common Street buildings, including pest control and remediation. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> What's that? Do you want, you want to speak to this? I do want to okay, speak go that. ahead. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to propose an amendment. Uh, okay. I'd, I'd like to propose uh, that the motion be... Uh, I move that the town transfer $45,000 from free cash to library building repair and maintenance account for maintenance, repairs, and upgrades of both 2 Lincoln Street and 18 Common Street buildings. Second. Hold on. All right. So... Uh, you want to strike 25000 and insert 45000 bucks, and you want to expand uh, what it can be used for, for maintenance, repairs, and upgrades. Is that correct? That's correct. There is a motion to amend uh, to strike 25000 and insert 45000 bucks. So we're going to we want us to spend forty five rather than 25 And we want to expand uh, to uh, upgrades, to including maintenance, repairs and upgrades. I heard a second over here. Is there any further debate on the motion to uh, amend? Yeah, uh, Pat's making her way. She she got up first, so. You want to know what it's for? Huh? Okay, so now you're adding on another $20,000 at the top of a hat so that you can do some more modifications to a building that needs a whole lot more than $45,000, which is my opinion. My opinion is, is that let's not rush into a decision to add another $20,000 on 
to an article that we're not even getting a clear understanding of what they're doing to the building in the first place. So Brenda has said that it's either going to be vinyl sided or it's going to be painted. But she can't really give us an estimate. Now, is it just being vinyl sided and painted for 20000 Or are there other things on that agenda for the 20000 besides that control? Of the 25,000 because my addition is is that it's 3,000 for bats 20,000 for painting and that leaves 2,000 up in the air that nobody's asking about um, that's pretty simple math and I don't need you know so now let's not add another $20,000 onto that without even knowing what we're doing let's just throw some money at something because we got a lot of free cash that's not the proper way to do it either. What we need to do is we need to come up with a strategy of how you're going to spend money to repair and get the annex up and running that's ADA compliant. And you've got enough people that volunteer in this town at the library. Instead of spending $20,000 paying for somebody to paint it, why don't we get a bunch of volunteers like the Amish do and do a barn lifting and paint it ourselves? I'll be willing to get on a ladder and paint. I, you know, I'll take a Valium and get up there. But the point is, is that people need, you know, they haven't raised any money for themselves. Raise some money for yourself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Taft. Mr. Holcraft was, was uh, seeking the floor um, before and ladies first after all. You know, I want to see the building fixed, but I don't want to see this turn into a money pit. Um, you, you're now we're allocating forty-five thousand. We don't, like Pat just said, we don't even know what we're going to use. Uh, why don't we just postpone this until we get a, a clear cut of what she's going to do to this building, and then everybody can. I'm sure everybody will be behind it, but I think we need to get a clear cut of where this money is going to be allocated. We just can't say willy nilly, and it's not free cash. It looks like we were raised in appropriating this. Is that true? No, it's free cash. Is it free cash? Okay. Um, so I like to I like to make a motion uh, to postpone it. Uh, there is a motion to postpone indefinitely. Now hold on one second. Hold on. No, I need you to stay here, Dave. All right. So. Um, um, That's my choice of words, Bill. <clears throat> very good choice of words, Mr. I Holcraft. think so. It's a motion. Um, I'm just trying to think about this for a second. You're looking to, to postpone indefinitely the amendment, okay? That's because correct. there's an amendment on the floor. So you're just looking to postpone indefinitely the amendment that's on the floor, which is increasing the 25 to 45. No. No, I'm, 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 I'm making a motion amend to amend to postpone spending the money no, 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 on this no. health no, no, at this no, no. time. No, no, no. The motion to postpone <clears throat> indefinitely is a subsidiary motion that's applied to the, I'm sorry, it's applied to the amendment. Okay. Okay. And what you're trying to do here is kill the amendment, and then we'll get back to the main motion to spend 25000 bucks as it, as it was originally made. You understand what you're yep, doing? Yeah, I understand that. Okay. So... There's a motion to postpone indefinitely the amendment, which will kill the amendment and go back to the main motion without being amended. Okay? Is there a second to the motion to postpone indefinitely? Second. There's a second. Is there any further debate? Uh, I'm going to limit debate on the motion to amend only. All right. Did you want to go first? I, I was going to. I was going to go first. Go but. ahead. Okay. The, the reason for the amend the original reason for the amendment was actually I was taking Mr. Holcraft's advice here on the floor. He indicated he didn't understand why we we're paying twenty thousand dollars and not addressing the ADA. The original quote that we had on at least doing a certain portion of the modifications was between fifteen and seventeen thousand dollars. It wouldn't have gotten us fully ADA compliant, but it would have gotten us in the neighborhood for a building of that age. There are some allowances when you're dealing with a a, a a, a building of that age that can be considered historic even though there's not technically restrictions as Brenda said so the twenty thousand dollars would get us roughly in the neighborhood to get us most of the way to ADA compliant even if the grant money doesn't come in so that's the reason for the amount and I was actually taking Mr. Holcraft's comments into consideration when adding that to the baseline amount for the library okay 
Mr. Moderator, you're up. The library is like one of the most beautiful buildings we have in our town. They're telling us that they need 25,000. It's going to be now changed to a different number. I say we give them the money. I mean, the interior of the library is beautiful. The outside of it's beautiful. It, they need to get it, they need to get the uh, the annex up to you know ADA compliant. And Brenda can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the library receives grant money from the state every time they let people use that space, and as I understand it. So. I don't understand what the resistance is. They need the money. Let's give them the money that they need. It's one of the most beautiful buildings in our town. Come on, seriously, please. Okay, we got a motion to postpone indefinitely an amendment to the main motion. Is there any further debate on the motion to postpone indefinitely? Hearing none, I wanna make sure we're clear a vote yes on this will kill the amendment and we will go back to, uh, if it's adopted, we will go back to the main motion of $25,000 and whatever, okay? Uh, if we vote no on this, we'll be back to the amendment, okay, which is going to raise 25,000 to 45,000 and expand the scope. Everybody with me here? All right, so if you're in favor of postponing the amendment indefinitely, say aye. If you are opposed to postponing the motion uh, to amend indefinitely, say no. No. <sighs> I, I, I can't tell. I need to count. I'm sorry. Bill? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I've done that before. I like, you know, I go, okay, so go ahead. Go do it, you know? Can you clarify what we're voting on? Yes. Please. I will. Okay. We have a main motion. We have a motion to amend the main motion, okay? And now we're being asked to whether or not we want to postpone the amendment indefinitely, okay? A yes vote means we will kill the amendment and we will go back to the main motion of $25,000 and maintenance and repairs. A vote no, we will continue talking about the motion to amend to raise 25,000 to 45,000 and to expand the scope for maintenance, repairs and upgrades. Okay, so a yes vote, you wanna kill this amendment, a no vote, you wanna, you wanna you're in favor of the amendment, okay? Is that, is that clear? Everybody clear? All right. All those in favor of postponing the amendment indefinitely, please rise. All right, all those opposed, please rise. The yeses were 31, the noes were 38. The motion to postpone indefinitely has been defeated. We are back to the motion to amend the main motion to increase $25,000 to $45,000 and to increase the scope for maintenance, repairs, and upgrades. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Uh, hold on, we've, we've got a gentleman over here and I think you've spoken on the amendment already. I want to speak on something else. Uh, Chris Roberts, 30 Pine Lane. Um, I was just wondering if the, uh, I'm not sure if it can be like a recommendation to the motion, um, but if we could earmark the 20,000 set of just for upgrades for ADA compliant upgrades or something along those lines, is that something we could do?
Um, town council tells me, and I threw her under the bus, sorry, Michelle, uh, that we could. Uh, however, it would tie uh, hands. So if bids came in for something, you know, uh, one way, and uh, you see what I'm doing here, right? So you could, yeah, but uh, that, if you would like. If I'm wrong, the twenty thousand is supposed to go for the ADA compliance items, correct? That was the original intention for adding the twenty thousand. That's the intent, yes. Um, so would I have to make a motion on the motion, or how could I? How could I? What's the proper way to uh, do that to earmark that extra twenty thousand for ADA upgrades? Um. So, um, how much do you want to? How much do you want to do? What? Um, the the twenty thousand okay. that was added in the motion to raise it from twenty twenty thousand to forty five. Yeah. That extra twenty thousand for ADA compliance upgrades. No, it's I was, okay. I was just going to add right. Go ahead. with, with 20,000 of this four, amount for ADA compliant, compliance. compliance. All right. Um, No, 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 no. I mean, cause I think if we're um, still talking about the amendment to change it from twenty-five to forty-five, so, she could amend her motion. To so, hang on one second. All right. So, what you want to do is you want to add to the end of this main motion uh, with twenty thousand for ADA compliance. Yeah. That's what you want to do. Correct. Um, is there any objection to just adding? Uh, that uh, uh, is there any objection to adding that wordage to the end of the amendment uh, that uh, Selectman uh, Kaufman has made? Any objection? Coughlin, Coughlin sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, hearing none. Uh, do you want to? Well, it's already been adopted, so right. you can speak some more. You still had some time left. You're all done. All right. Is it, okay, Mr. Hulk. So I have just a question. Okay, let me just make sure that everybody yep. understands what the amendment is currently reading. This is getting confusing, even for me. Okay, so the amendment is to increase $25,000 to $45,000 to expand the scope to include and upgrades, and that $20,000 of the $45,000 is for ADA compliance. Everybody with me? All right, Mr. Holcraft, thank you. I asked the question if this was coming out of free cash, and, and it was, but in here it's, it says raise and appropriate. Am I reading this wrong? Yeah. The motion that was made uh, was to uh, transfer from free cash. That is the motion, regardless of what you're reading there. The motion that we have on the floor is to transfer. Okay, from so free what cash. this says is not correct. So, on six, what's that? Article so, so 16. Through you, Mr. Moderator. So um, I just want some clarification on it. I'm reading, the motion. I'm, Okay, I'm sorry. The motion that has been made is to transfer $45,000 if we adopt the amendment from free cash. Forget about what's written in that booklet. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. There you go. You got it. You're good. All right. Any further discussion on the amendment? Move the question. Move the question. Is there a second to move the question? Second. All those in favor of moving the question on the amendment. Do you want to do it just on the amendment or all of it? All of it. All of it. Everybody understand? So we're going to shut down debate on the whole thing. If it's successful, we're going to vote on the amendment, and then we're going to vote on the, the main motion. All right? If it's not successful, then we're going to go back to debating the amendment. Okay? You with me? All right. So uh, all those in favor of closing debate on everything, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. We are going to vote on the amendment, which is to strike $25,000, strike $25,000 and insert $45,000, strike the word and and insert after repairs and upgrades, as well as adding with $20,000 for ADA compliance. All those in favor of this amendment, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. 
The amendment is adopted. We are now back to the main motion, which is to transfer $45,000 from free cash to the library building repair and maintenance account for maintenance, repairs, and upgrades of both two Lincoln Street and 18 Common Street buildings, including pest control and remediation with $20,000 for ADA compliance. All those in favor of this motion say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. no. The ayes have it. Uh, the motion as amended has been adopted. Article number 17. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $55,000 from free cash for the removal of hazardous trees in the town. Motion has been made to transfer $55,000 from free cash for the removal of hazardous trees in town. Is there a second? Second. A mo so, a mo so it's been second. Is there any debate on the motion to spend some money on taking down some dangerous trees? All those in favor of transferring $55,000 of free cash for removal of hazardous trees in town say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number 18. Do I have a motion for Article 18? I move that the town transfer $80,000 from the cable peg access receipts reserved fund for the purpose of funding cable related costs, expenses, fees, payroll, and general oversight of public access cable for fiscal year 2025. A motion has been made to transfer $80,000 from the cable peg access receipts reserved fund for the purposes of funding cable related costs, expenses, fees, payroll, and general oversight of public access cable for fiscal year 2025 is there a second? second there is a second is there any debate on the motion to spend 80,000 uh, bucks for cable access mr. moderator oh. um, so um, someone has the floor I'm just waiting um, could we you speak into the, speak into the <laughs> microphone. I'm sorry. Sorry. I know you got a good booming voice, but yes, you still need I to do. you still need to uh, use the mic. Could you tell me how much is in the uh, the cable access account now? Sure. Our peg account currently has one hundred ninety three thousand eight hundred sixty seven dollars. And where does that revenue come from? It comes in from our payment from Charter every year. When's the last time that we spent any money out of that account? We out, So it's a receipt reserved account. So the only way for us to spend money is when we allocate money at town meetings. So it requires a town meeting vote. We allocated money last year um, for the same purpose, to put money into an article so money could be spent by the Cable Advisory Committee. How much did we spend last year? Mm. We allocated a total, oh, I'm just, my articles are combined, so over the last two years we've allocated $130,000 and over this past year we have spent 53000 So out of the 130000 we spent 53. 53 yes. Okay, so why are we asking for eighty? So we have to allocate money and put it into this article account in order for it to be spent. Um, per Mass General Law, if none of it is spent, it sits in the article account and it can either be carried over every fiscal year or it has to be returned to the PEG fund. Okay. It can't go to free cash or anything else. Okay, so it also says here that it is for payroll. Is this for an employee of the town? Yes, we have a cable coordinator. What do we pay that position? <coughs> I'm not sure what his wage is. No. That we so we have an employee that we pay benefits to? No, no benefits. It's a part-time as-needed position. Um, he videotapes meetings um, and does stuff around the cable studio as okay, needed. Okay, so part of that 53000 is his salary? Yes. But okay. you can't tell us how much? So, uh, No, I didn't bring a detailed report. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Any further discussion 
uh, and uh, the motion to transfer eighty thousand dollars from cable mm. peg access receipts reserve fund for the purposes of funding cable related costs expenses fees payroll general oversight of public access cable for fiscal year 2025 mr holcraft can you read that any quicker I don't know. <laughs> what I like to know times, is why is our cable access TV off and we're sitting with $193,000 in the bank? What's going on here? Three years ago, I was promised by Beth Coughlin that we were going to get this cable thing running. And we still don't have the cable access on TV. Six, seven years later, why is all this money in the bank still? Yeah, no one can answer that, huh? Any further, any further debate? Yeah, but we have to pay that fund. Yeah, it comes out of the, uh, every time you pay a bill, cable, you take a little bit out. Mr. Moderator, Tom Regan, Six Mockingbird Lane. Um, through you, I'd like to ask the select board if they could, um, if they are familiar with the status of the work by our cable coordinator, and if they could share that with the town. And if not, I could. Or should I just share what I know, Mr. Moderator? Would that be simpler? Okay. Um, uh, in my position, in my uh, position, recently um, turfed out as a member of the select board. Thank you, Mr. Chafee. Is okay. That, uh, it, please. It is I'm sorry. Um, is that the um, the cable coordinator has been working to upgrade our equipment um, to the point so that editing can be done faster. And uh, he has, and when I last talked to him at the beginning of the month, he was uh, slotted for training on the new equipment and new software. And that was the last thing that we needed before the Brookfield Community TV channel on Charter could be reactivated. So my understanding is we are very close. Uh, and I think that is a direct answer to the question that Mr. Holdcraft raised. We are, I don't think we're there yet. I will leave it to select board to push that um, ball over the hill and get it going. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, um, mm -hmm. you're welcome. Any further debate uh, on transferring 80,000 bucks? I'd like to repute that, please. Excuse um, me. I've been hearing this for two, three years. We're getting new equipment. We're doing this. We're doing this. Almost ready. Almost ready. I've been hearing that for three years, despite what Tom just said. It's, it's three years you've been saying, oh, we're getting equipment. We're doing this. We're doing that. Nothing is getting done. Zero. And we're still there now. And we have a guy that works for us and still isn't up and running. So let's stick to the facts. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I can just say we did just pay for new equipment. I can't tell you what because I, I know nothing about what I was reading. But we did just purchase new equipment. Okay. Um, my understanding is that there are plans afoot to electronically and videographically connect, is that a word? Yes. Um, connect the ballroom with the um, banquet hall um, through the use of some of these funds, which would be used to purchase equipment, which would help make it possible to hold meetings in the ballroom and transmit a two-way um, back and forth video and audio connection so that people who are not able to get to the second floor for those meetings can participate fully in those meetings. And from my understanding was that some of this money is going to be allocated toward that system. And um, if I'm not correct, I, I welcome any corrections. Okay, thank you. Any further debate? Uh, <clears throat> On the motion to transfer eighty thousand bucks from the cable peg access receipts reserve fund for the purchase, uh, for the purpose of funding cable related costs, expenses, fees, payroll, and general oversight of public access cable for fiscal year twenty twenty five. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number nineteen, please. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer five hundred and seventy-five dollars from free cash to fund plantings and care of plants on the Triangle Memorial Beds and Gazebo. Motion has been made to transfer five hundred and seventy-five bucks from free cash to fund the plantings and care of plants on the Triangle Memorial Beds and Gazebo. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Okay. Is there any debate on the motion? 
no debate, comment. Uh, any way we can incorporate flags in this article? I mean, I notice there's no flags on the common this year. Uh, I do my part and put up some flags. I'd like to have some money available for the town to have all their flags in place. <coughs> Would, could we could we incorporate <laughs> flags? I, I really don't know. You could the make a motion place. to amend to include flags. Yeah, we have to add some money, definitely. Then you'd have to move to amend the amount. Uh, understood. And and the language. How much you want? Death. I know what I spend. I think we need a thousand dollars. Just it's a start. Uh, don't worry about that part. I just want to see flags throughout the town that aren't there now, but. It would be nice in the future when um, the funding isn't available that I gather. Okay, so hold on. So what I want to know is how do you want to amend this thing? Beth's going to do that for me. Uh, <laughs> talking about... Sorry. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town tr that the town transfer five hundred and I'm sorry, one thousand five hundred and seventy-five dollars from free cash to fund uh, the purchase of flags and plants for for the care and uh, appropriate maintenance of the triangle memorial beds and gazebo. Second. Hold on. Okay, so you just kind of got me screwed up on the on the language. I got the I got the fifteen fifteen five seventy five. So uh, to fund or to pay for uh, flags, uh, plantings, uh, and care of plants yep. on the triangle, memorial beds, uh, and gazebo. Is that it? Yep. Okay. So there's a moat. What's that? Uh, I, I'm going to triangle memorial beds mm -hmm. and gazebo. Uh, um, so uh, the motion is to uh, increase 575 to 1575 bucks uh, and to include flags in what we're going to buy and in, in, uh, also plants and stuff. Uh, let's see. Did I ask for a second? Second. Is there any debate? I like, the motion to amend. I'm behind this 100%. Um, this is under the purview of the of the culture council. I want to know, the, and I think Bruce wants to see flags on Central Street as well. I, I think that's what he's trying to say. Um, but the culture council was supposed to take care of putting flags on Central Street. We've been doing that. What well, they've been doing. I was so, on the, so and, I so I don't uh, know if we should I, go over. I appreciate what you're saying. Okay, I'm just okay, making so, no, no. But, I'm just making no, a we're, statement. We're talking about we're talking right. about the Triangle Memorial beds and gazebo. I'm sorry. That's where, what we got where, here. What about the flags? Where are the flags going to be placed in town? Um, you didn't state the, that. The Triangle Memorial Beds and Gazebo. Okay. Well, I don't know if Bruce was thinking of Central Street as I well. Know. Bruce I'm not is sure. right behind you. Bruce, you want to tell him what you were thinking? I'm right behind you, yeah. Bruce. I'm all for it. Central Street, Common Street, River Street, wherever we used to have them, they're not all there this year. Right. And it was noticeable. So, all right. This, the motion that's Flags for town property. Yeah, but... I know it's, it's pretty vague, but but it is town property. What are you gonna do? What do you want to do? You want to expand it to like? You just want to say throughout the town. Throughout the town, can we do that? And then just leave it to the discretion of discretion of the selectmen. Uh, plants. Okay. Jeez. Man, you guys are really making me work. That's what you All right. paid for, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. I haven't gotten a raise in years. Okay, so um, so is there any is there any uh, objection uh, to amending the amendment to uh, basically strike on the triangle memorial beds and gazebo and just say throughout the 
town. Yeah. There's an objection to that? Yes. I don't object. I would just like to make a clarification, if I could. Okay. Um, I would like it to say American flags, please. Anybody object to American flags? I hear no objections to American flags. All right. So, hang on one second. Um, I just got to get my bearings on what we're doing here. All right. So, we have a motion to amend that now is to strike 575 bucks and insert 1,575 bucks and to change the wording uh, from free cash, excuse me, to uh, pay for American flags, plantings, and care of plants throughout the town. All right, that's the, that's the motion to amend at this point. All right, you wanna to speak to the motion to amend? Just a comment. My name is Noel, I live at Westward Way over here in Brookfield, I'm a fairly new resident, and so far I love my new home. That being said, I on the flag thing, she kind of touched base on what I was going to um, comment on. Are we just going to go with national flags and state flags, or are we going to just celebrate every faction under the sun? She said American flags. I understand that part, but I'm talking about what I'm, I'm talking about you. I'm talking uh, what how you are going to define flags, and if it's just going to be national flags and state flags, or if it's going to be every faction imaginable. Okay. So the answer to your question is it's just American flags only. Okay. Thank you. That Stars and stripes. Okay. Just making sure. Wanted there you to go. clarify. You're in. Uh, I just got one on. question. I just got one. I just want to know where the money is going to be uh, kept. What account? What committee? Whatever. Excuse me. Somebody got an answer to that question? So this money would go into the warrant article account for flags and plants, and it would get disseminated to whatever the appropriate groups that were going to get the flags and plants for the common areas of the town. They would appeal for what they were going to put out. They would then ask for reimbursement from this account. It could be cultural council. This was originally intended for the garden club because the garden club has funded this out of their own funds for a number of years and it's become cost prohibitive for the group that was supporting the town otherwise. So they're still providing the labor and now we would be providing the plants. Mr. Moderator, Kevin Urkula, 130 Long Hill Road. Uh, to Ms. Kaufman's point that she just made, I believe that the purpose and the intent of this article is being hijacked. It, as she said, this triangle and the beds and the plantings around the gazebo have been funded by private donations and the intent of the article was to have the town pay for its own beautification. Uh, now, it, now it becomes uh, something that's way beyond what we wanted. If see that people want to uh, beautify the town in other ways with American flags or whatever, they can, they're perfectly uh, welcome to have their own article in a future meeting uh, or to take over this themselves and, and voluntarily fund those projects. But I think that this uh, project, this article should be limited in its scope to the original intent. You oppose the amendment. Okay, any other debate uh, on the amendment? Okay. David Fromm, 68 Fiskdale. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, pursuant to our HCA agreement with the town in which we have pledged to be good citizens, uh, Sunfusions Incorporated would like to amend the article to state that if it passes, we will match the amount so that all the flags and the plants can be covered. Thank you. Um, there's no need uh, to amend uh, the motion. You're just making a commitment and a promise that you will make a, an additional contribution, which is wonderful. Thank you very much. But there's no need for us to take an action on that. Only you uh, can interact with the selectmen or whomever to do that. So thank you very much. We are back to, I believe, uh, the amendment.
which is to strike 575 bucks and insert 1,575 uh, and change the wording so that the money is coming from free cash to pay for American flags, plantings, and care of plants throughout the town. Any further debate on the motion to amend? All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. no. The ayes have it. The amendment is adopted. We are back to the main motion. Uh, which now reads to transfer $1,575 from free cash to pay for American flags planting and American flags plantings and care of plants throughout the town. Is there any further debate on the motion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Uh, Article 20. The motion is adopted. Article 20. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $8,000 from free cash to demolish and clean up the town-owned former roller skating rink on Pine Lane. Motion has been made to transfer $8,000 from free cash to demolish and clean up the town-owned former roller skating rink on Pine Lane. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Uh, is there any debate uh, on this motion? Okay, once we demolish the building, then what's going to happen with the land? Why don't we just sell the whole property and get rid of it, put the money back in the, the general fund? What's the purpose? If we take it down, then what? what do we have something that's going to be allocated for this piece of property? It's very small. Who, who can answer that? Can somebody answer that question for him? So uh, the proposal is to read remove the existing structure because it's a liability to the town. It'll be up to the town to figure out what to do with it afterwards. Okay. That uh, sole purpose to get rid of the building so that we remove the liability. Charles Wilson, 8 Ward Street. Um, I would just like to know why this piece of property didn't go up to auction with all the other properties last year, um, knowing that it is, you know, a detriment, if you will, like everything else we were trying to sell last year. And also, um, why should taxpayers pay for something we're just going to sell? They're not making more waterfront property. It's going to go for a very high dollar anyway. So why, why didn't we sell it? That's a good question. We're spending taxpayers' dollars for no particular reason. Any further debate? Um, I covered the original um, disposition of the property back when I was a reporter for the Spencer New Leader. <laughs> the property was owned by a private person. He divided it up into condominiums. There were no buildings on the property, just trailers, but he subdivided each one into a condominium and sold them to the people owning the trailers that were on those condominiums. Um, the town ended up taking the owner to court and repossessing that property. The town now owns that property, including, I believe, the building that is the question of this warrant article. So the town did not auction anything off. The town owns the property. There's since been Adena artifacts discovered on it, which makes it a historical site. And um, so the question about auctions, I believe, is uh, not applicable to this. Any further debate uh, on the motion to transfer 8,000 bucks of free cash to demolish and clean up the town-owned roller skating rink uh, on Pine Lane? <laughs> Mr. Moderator, Tom Regan, through you. Um, I'm in support of this motion uh, simply because while this will provide us time to decide how we want to dis um, make use of this property and the old roller rink as I understand is a liability hazard and in order to protect the town from that and allow us time to decide what we want to do with that property I think this is a good idea thank you any further debate on the motion all right, the motion is to transfer 8,000 bucks from free cash to demolish and clean up the town-owned roller, former roller skating rink uh, on Pine Lane. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. no. The ayes have it. Motion is adopted. Article 21. 
Mr. Moderator, I move to transfer $500 from free cash permanently to, to permanently mark the 601 hot flood level high water mark at both Quaybog Street and Quaycom Quaysa boat, boat ramps. Yeah. Transfer, uh, the motion has been made to transfer $500 from free cash to permanently mark 601 MSL flood level high water mark at both the Quaybog and Quaquamaquasset boat ramps. How to do? Pretty good. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any debate on the motion? I just have a question. What's the um, what's the five hundred dollars for? You need a can of paint. I'll donate it. <laughs> can somebody please explain? <laughs> so the five hundred dollars is to cover uh, marking, signage, and labeling at both boat ramps. Uh, the Lake Association took upon themselves to pay for the survey that uh, was originally in part of the article. Uh, and has been removed. That thousand dollars has been removed. So the five hundred is to cover the painting, signage, and marking of both ramps. Okay. Any further debate? So, question, Mr. Moderator. I thought there is already a high water mark on the Quaybog um, ramp. I mean, is there, was is there one there something now? Something was painted there. Now I don't know what it is. When we had it surveyed, we did put uh, orange marks on the uh, each boat ramp to identify the 601 mark, which is in our bylaws. Um, but for anybody that is putting a boat in that's not familiar with it, they have no idea what two orange marks are. So the idea would be to put a mark across the boat ramp saying, high water, no wake, so that everybody knows and a sign that uh, enforces that. So you're saying it's already been surveyed, but we need $500 to put a strip and the words no wake? Yes. And signage, I believe you said. Yes. Any further debate? The motion is to transfer 500 bucks from free cash to permanently mark 601 MSL flood level high water mark on both the Quaybog and Quaquamaquasset boat ramps. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Uh, the motion is adopted. Article 22. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town reaffirm the vote of June 1st, 2023 annual town meeting under Article 18 to make cemetery waterline repairs and upgrades along with any incidental costs. Motion has been made to reaffirm the vote of June 1st, 2023 annual town meeting under Article 18 to make cemetery waterline repairs and upgrades along with any incidental costs. Is there a second? Okay. Uh, is there any debate uh, on the motion? <coughs> All right. Uh, the motion is to reaffirm the vote of June 1st, 2023 annual town meeting under Article 18 to make cemetery waterline repairs and upgrades along with any incidental costs. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion is adopted. Article number 23. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town adopt Mass General Law Section 59, or Chapter 59, Section 21A regarding additional compensation of assessors for courses of study. Motion has been made to adopt Mass General Law, Chapter 59, Section 21A, regarding additional compensation of assessors for courses of study. Is there a second? Second. Is there any debate on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion is adopted. Article 24. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town adopt Mass General Law, Chapter 59, Section 550, as amended by Chapter 653, Section 40, and of the Acts of 1989, Assessment of New Construction. Motion has been made to adopt Mass General Law, Chapter 59, Section 550, as amended by Chapter 653, Section 40 of the Acts of 1989, Assessment of New Construction. Is there a second? Uh, is there any debate on the motion? All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. <coughs> the ayes have it. 
Motion is adopted. Article 25. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town accept Mass General Law Chapter 64 and uh, Subsection 3 to impose an excise on the retail sales of marijuana for adult use at a rate of 3% to take effect on the first day of the calendar quarter following 30 days after acceptance by the town. Motion has been made to accept Mass General Law Chapter 64N Section 3 to impose an excise tax on retail sales of marijuana for adult use at a rate of 3% to take effect on the first day of the calendar quarter following 30 days after acceptance by the town. Is there a second? Second. I heard a second. Is there any debate on the motion? No debate, just some clarification to the townspeople what this all means. A lot of people aren't in the loop of what this is all about, so I think someone should explain it to them. That's fine. Oh, is there an explanation? I thought he was going to explain it to us. Oh, yeah. uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, under Mass General Law, uh, communities can set a local excise tax of up to 3% on any retail marijuana sold within the confines of the town. Think of it the same as like your meals tax that you're allowed to have. You're allowed to have like a hotel tax. You're allowed to have a pot tax. Uh, so uh, every town that has adopted it has adopted it at the maximum rate of 3%, and that's the current recommendation before you. Any further debate on the motion? The motion is to accept Mass General Law Chapter 64N Section 3 to impose an excise tax on retail sales of marijuana for adult use at a rate of 3% to take effect on the first day of the calendar quarter following 30 days after acceptance by the town. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number 26. Mr. Moderator. I move that the town will vote to adopt Mass General Law Chapter 87 pertaining to governing public shade trees. Most. Did it? Did you hear me? Did, did, did everybody hear him? Uh, well, I'm going to repeat the motion anyway. The motion has been made to adopt Mass General Law Chapter 87 pertaining to governing public shade sh trees. Uh, is there a second? Uh, is there any debate on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor uh, say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. Article, uh, the motion is adopted. Um, Article 27. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town set the FY 2025 spending limits for the town's revolving funds authorized pursuant to Chapter 5, Financial Affairs, Section 8 of the town's general bylaws as printed in Article 27 of the annual town meeting warrant. Motion has been made to set the fiscal year 2025 spending limits for the town's revolving funds authorized pursuant to Chapter 5, Financial Affairs, Section 8 of the town's general bylaws as printed in Article 27 of the annual town meeting warrant. Is there a second? Second. Uh, is there any debate on the motion? Not a debate. Um, I thought this regional highway equipment cooperative was defunct. Are we still doing this with other towns? And if we are, what are we doing? I mean, what are we doing with the other towns? I thought this thing was defunct five years ago. Anybody here can answer that? Highway boss? I, I can provide some explanation. They, um, they do signs. Um, that's the biggest thing they're doing right now is they make signs for um, other departments in our town. They make signs for other towns. Um, so they receive a little bit of money and they have a little bit of expenses to like 3M as their vendor. That's really all they're doing. I've been told that that sign machine hasn't been used in years. Nope, they're still. That, they're still using yep. it? Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Any further debate on the motion? All right, so the motion is uh, to set the fiscal year 2025 spending limits for the town's revolving funds authorized pursuant to Chapter 5, Financial Affairs, Section 8 of the town's general bylaws as printed in Article 27 of the annual town meeting warrant. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion is adopted. Article 28. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town authorize the select board to take the first steps to securing property to support a dedicated space for senior activities. 
Motion has been made to authorize the select board to take first steps to securing property to support a dedicated space for senior citizens. Is there a second? Second. Uh, is there any debate uh, on the motion? Just some clarification. Now, what do we what are we uh, allocating this money for? Are we looking for land to build a senior center? I don't believe there's any money associated with this. Okay, what are we doing? Just having a search to look for some land to build one? Select board. So this was a citizen's petition. I don't know if we have the people that oh. submitted it here. Who's, who submitted it? Yeah, it said sponsored by us, but this came in as a citizen's petition. So that's a uh, that's a. That's Mr. A Taft, do you have a, do you have an answer to this, or are you just looking to debate? Uh, Dave. Oh, I'm sorry. So this was in discussion. I don't know if it was a citizen's petition or a presentation uh, that was made to the select board. Uh, that there is a need in this town for a senior center, and the Senior Council on Aging has been expanding their programs with the idea that in the future we would certainly be looking for something more um, uh, structure that we could utilize um, other than the space at the church. So this article would give the board the opportunity to con take into consideration uh, uh, options for a senior center. Any further debate? The motion is to authorize the select board to take first steps to securing property to support a dedicated space for senior activities. Um, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article 29. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town repurpose the remaining funds of $72,715.45 originally voted under Article 28 of June 28, 2018 annual town meeting and under Article 24 the 3rd of June 2022 annual town meeting for the platform list lift now to be used for the purpose of creating handicap access to the second floor of the town hall. A motion has been made to repurpose the remaining funds of $72,715.45 originally voted under Article 28 of the June 28, 2018 Annual Town Meeting and under Article 24 of the June 3, 2022 Annual Town Meeting for the platform lift now to be used for the purpose of creating handicap access to the second floor of the town hall. Is there a second? second. There is a second. Is there any debate on the motion? Yeah, if we're gonna vote an elevator in tonight, now you're talking about a platform lift two, are we gonna need both of them? Or are we just gonna vote one of them in? We don't need both of them. Through you, Mr. Moderator, the intent is that this would par be partial funding for the elevator. What we're doing is reallocating the platform lift funding to be used for any means found by the town to be able to get us to the second floor, which would include partial funding of an elevator for the town hall. It doesn't say that here in the article. That sounds a little shady to me. It sounds it says, it says here a platform lift no, with a figure. No. It doesn't say anything about an elevator. No, oh, 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 no. hold on a second. Nope. Uh, Mr. Holcraft, nope, nope, can I just nope. focus your attention on something here? Okay, because when you started talking, nope. I'm thinking the same way. Okay, What's that? But, but I'm not. Okay, it says... The tail end of that of the of the motion is now to be used. So formerly it was dedicated to the platform, now to be used for purposes of creating handicap access to second floor town hall. I believe that is what it's saying. It used to be purposed for a lift. Now right. they want to use it for handicap access. Is that? I just okay, want to make it that, clear. Okay, that's that's clarification. Okay, okay. Yes. so you so that money will be allocated towards an elevator then. I have no idea. It simply says this. Maybe the selectmen well, have... Try, I'm trying to figure out what it's okay. actually saying here. Does the selectmen have an answer? The intent is to repurpose the platform lift funding for a future elevator. Okay. All right. Good. Very good. Any further debate? Okay. I, uh, I do. Oh. All set? Yeah. Go. Sorry. So my only concern is... 
as we start repurposing the funds and then our next article is to install a fire system and then we don't know how much we're going to need for the elevator and then we're going to continue on and have to deal with a fire suppression system I would like to know what the total cost is going to be to use the second floor to town hall because Sharon Mahoney spoke earlier that we have new equipment so that we don't need the handicap to access the second floor we can meet the ADA accessibility by the camera system having them on the first floor and the bulk of the meeting on a second I hope I understood stood you correctly sure. I believe you did not what I said was is that the video equipment that has been proposed would facilitate town meetings in the ballroom that could be accessed from the banquet room there are other uses for the ballroom that will not be be uh, that equipment will not be sufficient for. Does that answer your question? You, you, is that clear, Richard? Well, I want to expand on that. Okay. So, as we continue to spend money to fix the upstairs, rather than do the bits and pieces that we're doing, like the forty-two thousand we used to paint the upstairs, and now we don't have the, really the means to heat it any better than what we did when it deteriorated. I would like to know what the total cost is going to be to repair the town hall with an elevator, with a fire alarm system, with a fire suppression system, because it's my understanding once we get over 99 people on the second floor, we will need fire suppression. So that's probably a half a million dollars alone. The elevator is going to be anywhere from 300000 to 500000 I would like to know what the total cost is before we keep allocating small bits and pieces to know that we're good, we have 1.5 million to go. Does anybody have that number? I guess not. So I think the answer to your the answer to your question is we don't know. So I and your time's expired um, for the moment. So uh, you got another shot at it. If nobody else wants to speak, then you can have another two minutes. Anybody else uh, want to uh, speak to the speak to the motion? $72,000 sitting right now. It's in an article account currently designated for the platform lift. Okay, so if we don't if we don't pass this article, it still continues to sit there. It'll stay there until I go to close this fiscal year and then the selectmen will have to decide if they want to leave it sitting in the platform lift account or if they want to close it out to free cash. So, since 2018, because this article number 28 is from 2018, we have been storing it in this account right along every year. Yes. Okay, and so now we're looking to move it to a different account. Yes. And what is that account that we're trying to move it to? We want to move it to an account um, that's just called Handicap Access for the second floor because the original account is called Platform Lift, so it's restricted. Okay. Miss, Mr. Moderator, I would like to make a motion that we permanently postpone this article. There's a motion to indefinitely postpone indefinitely the main post motion. Yeah, yes, very good. Please. That's very good. Thank you. Uh, I heard a second over here. You, okay. you, you, you have some more time if you'd like to support your motion to postpone the, the indefinitely. The reason that I say that is, is that I, I believe what Mr. Chafee is saying. I think that between the Board of Selectmen, the advisory board, and a few key people in this town should get together and find out exactly what we're talking about to repair our town hall instead of band-aiding money from this account and band-aiding money from this account and trying to figure out, okay, we have to do this, we have to do this, and by the time we get done, we've spent all this money and we probably still can't use the town hall. So let's figure out what the total cost is. And I would rather see us at least use the money to hire somebody 
to come in as a consultant to help us figure it out okay. how we're going to All right. upgrade our town hall. All right. So we got a motion uh, to postpone uh, indefinitely. This is uh, totally unusual for us to have gotten to this point so many times this evening, but we are there. Yes, uh, are. It is a debatable motion all the way down to the merits. Yes. Uh, Mr. Cook. Yes, James Cook, Race Corner Road. I I'm going to vote in favor of this motion, but it's definitely because I share Mr. Chafee's concerns. Let me, we've been spending money on this town hall by bits and drabs. Maybe we need to have a little larger vision and consider putting up a new municipal building in this town that would be built for 100 years, taking advantage of modern technology so we use solar and other alternative forms of energy so we do it energy efficiently as opposed to throwing a lot of money at an old town hall. I think if we look at the total cost of new municipal building versus upgrading at a town hall, anybody who would look at ROI would go in a new building. We are on the motion to postpone indefinitely. Understood, Mr. Moderator. Um, uh, I am in agreement with Mr. Chafee's, and therefore I think the correct decision is to not permanently postpone this. I think that the underlying motion is valuable. By if we do not transfer this money, it's going to fall into free cash, and we will not see it until next year. By putting it into a handicapped access account, we can access it starting on July 1st and use it to fund the effort to decide what we're going to do with this. Or we could even modify the underlying motion to make it a study account. But I think passing it over means we do not see that money until one year from Postpone now. Postpone indefinitely. If I'm I sorry. hear that word again, I'm going to... All right. So therefore, I recommend we not postpone it indefinitely and we vote on the underlying mo motion. Thank you. Very <laughs> good. I'm in agreement with Mr. Reagan. Um, I want to remind some people who may not have been here that over 10 years ago, a plan was put forward with an architect's, draw an architect's drawings to renovate the entire town hall, the, uh, the, the intent being that if we paid for it all at once and did it immediately, it would be better than having to face dribs and drabs, as has, has been said, with the costs increasing each year. The good townspeople of this town voted that down, claiming it was too expensive, and here we are. So um, I am in favor. I am I'm not in favor of postponing this. I am in favor of the motion, the original motion, and I urge this body not to delay this any longer for the sake of some plan that may be voted down again in the future as being too expensive. Young lady over here. I just want Lori to clarify something for me. Um, Tom said that they had, didn't you, or Lori said that th the selectmen had the option to keep it in the platform lift account, correct? So, but then Tom said it would have to go to free cash. So is it both? Which one is it? So if it stays in the platform lift account, it can stay there indefinitely. Or when I go to close the books at the end of the year, I give the selectmen a list of all open accounts and they can choose to close them to free cash or they can choose to let them stay open. And if they choose to let them stay open, the intent is that the purpose of the account has not been fulfilled. Does that answer your question? You want to speak any further? Great. Richard. So I just want to summarize by saying it's pretty clear that it's a minimum of 1.5 million to get to that, get that building to the point where we can be upstairs and using it. If we use that building 12 to 15 times a year, are you guys willing to spend 1.5 million minimum and then the cost to keep it going, the cost of the elevator annually, the fire suppression, the fire alarm system? I firmly believe that we could use this building going forward for the next 40, 50 years rather than spending the money on a town hall. You guys decide, but my opinion is we don't need to spend that money in that location. I would rather take the 1.5 million that's a minimum and build a senior center or at least put it towards a senior center. And if we had that, maybe we could have our meetings there or we'd have other usage. But the town hall is not adequate for this day and age. That's all. Mr. Moderator, through you, I will point out that 
the uh, the article at hand is seventy five thousand dollars and transferring from one article to another we are not voting on spending 1.5 million dollars on town hall we're voting on whether we're going to set aside seventy five thousand dollars that we've already set aside and now allocated for handicapped access any money above and beyond that would have to be voted at a future town meeting. It's a $75,000 question, not a $1.5 million question, and it's $75,000 for handicapped access. And we can change that after we get past this question as to whether we're going to permanently pass it over. Uh, we're going to permanently postpone it. Uh, and to be clear, uh, the amount is, and, and I, I, I know you, you were just sort of trying to be general, but it's $72,715.45. Just want to be clear. It's not 75. Anyway, Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Um, I think you got to start somewhere. I think we got to start holding the line. Instead of spending $1.5 million again, we'd be better putting up a new building with a municipal center. You want a section area for the senior center. Start. I, I guess we just don't think about the financial ramifications in this town. And we need vision. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been involved with a number of these uh, town hall improvements and capital improvement committee and all these other things over 37 years here. And to, to the point Sharon made earlier, you know, these, these, these committees work a long time. They work really hard to get things sorted out. They come to town meeting. Sometimes they're successful. Sometimes they're not. But the point is, this isn't, this isn't new money. The money's already there. It's, we keep it in the account to start the process, whatever that is, for the town hall. But understanding that if we're going to start the process, we've got to deliver. Either we renovate the town hall or we build a, a new building. But this, that's not the debate we're having today. The debate we're having right now is what to do with that money. And the money's just there. It's been spent. Just move it to some place where it could be used, or maybe it won't be used in another year. And then it'll go to free cash. But it, it's not like we're asking to spend $72,000 out of the blue. And we're not debating a new building or a renovated building. It's a simple transfer of money that's already been spent. So I, I think we need, just need to move forward and get this transfer done and move to the next article. Just to be clear, um, we are on the motion to postpone uh, indefinitely. So, I just have one question. We the townspeople voted to put this uh, steer this steer platform lift in, what four or five years ago? Why was that not done? The people voted to have it put in, and the money's still sitting in the account. Why was that not done? Anybody have an answer to his question? Redhead, Mr. Simpson. Hi, Mr. Moderate, Moderator Bill Simpson from. Uh, I guess the Town Hall Improvement Committee, but 30 North Brookfield Road. Um, we've been working on this um, for a long time, and uh, we've made a ton of improvements to the Town Hall over the years. Um, we have two brand new bathrooms that are ADA accessible. We have heating systems throughout the whole building that are fully functional. Um, and we've done it with pretty much grant money and, and a little bit of an allocation from the town. So we've made significant improvements to the functionality of the building. Um, you know, sometimes by our own hands, going up there and cleaning the Great Hall ourselves to get the painting job done. Um, I guess I personally have an attachment to the building and maintaining it and improving it as best we can because it's been the town center of our town since 1904. Um, and it's a beautiful hall and having a meeting like this in that space would be a real treat, I think. This is stifling and rather uncomfortable. Um, but I would, and I've been pushing in that direction for a long time. So I would encourage you, the platform lift has been a nightmare. I'll just say that, you know, for the last six years, we've been trying to get the thing in there. Uh, COVID happened. The vendor went out of business or stopped returning our calls. The cost went up. And there's been a lot of challenges with that. And I, Dave, I've talked to you some about this, and I'll gladly talk to anyone who has any more questions about this. I don't have a ton of time right now. But um, I would encourage you to support um, allocating this money. So voting against the motion to... Postpone indefinitely, postpone indefinitely um, so that we can just have some access to this money to at least have options other than the platform lift. If the, we could get the platform lift going, I'd be all for it, but that's been kind of dead in the water for a little while now. So um, I encourage you to vote against the motion and support the just transfer of the funds to um, handicap accessibility. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there any further debate uh, on the motion to postpone uh, indefinitely? Uh, the main motion of transferring uh, remaining funds uh, to, you know, for handicap access to the second floor. 
any further debate on the motion to postpone indefinitely? If you vote yes, uh, this motion will be dead and we will be moving on uh, to Article 30. Uh, if you vote no, we will continue debating on this and eventually voting uh, one way or the other on it. Am I clear? All right. All those in favor of postponing indefinitely say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. No. Uh, the, uh, the no's have it. Uh, the motion is failed. Uh, we are back to the main I, I want to count. I like a count. He would like a count. I he would. would like a count. Uh, my counters, please. You guys ready? All right. All those in favor of postponing indefinitely, please stand. Please sit down. All those opposed to postponing indefinitely, please stand. You win overwhelmingly. The no's have it, even on the 24, uh, there were 18 yeses, and you said 24, so that was 48 uh, opposed, so we are back to, the motion to postpone indefinitely has failed. We are back to the main motion to repurpose the remaining funds of $72,715.45 originally voted under Article 8, 28 of the June 28th, 2018 Annual Town Meeting and under Article 24 of the June 3rd, 2022 Annual Town Meeting for the platform lift now to be purposed for the purpose of creating handicap access to the second floor to, of the town hall. Uh, is there any further debate uh, on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number 30. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer from free cash the sum of $80,000 to install a fire alarm system for the town hall. Motion has been made to transfer from free cash the sum of $80,000 to install a fire alarm system for the town hall. Is there a second? I heard a second. Uh, is there any debate on the motion to transfer uh, from free cash 80000 bucks to install a fire alarm system in the town hall? Have we have we looked uh, looked into any other options? Uh, Eighty thousand seems like a lot of money. Is there any way we can get the um, Tantascal uh, wire department to help us out here? If we bought all the materials, is that legally? Can we legally do that to have the school come in with, and uh, wire the whole place up? It would save us a tremendous amount of money. Can anybody? And it would give the kids a good, uh, some good experience. <clears throat> can anybody address that? Rich, did you want to speak yeah. to it since I'll, you've looked at it? I'll speak to that. So it is an option. From what I understand, through the wire and uh, the shop teacher who has brought the kids out, it is an option. They may have to get a an extension on their insurance to do the alarm system, and it's not guaranteed that they would get that from their insur the, the school's insurance. It's like a rider, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. And... I'm in the process of communicating with the director as well as the, uh, Mr. Wood is the director of the vocational department. So it's an option, but we don't know what it, whether it's a guarantee they could do it or not. And we're not even close to a, a number on the cost. Uh, Chris Gorman is here tonight. I spoke to him quite a bit about it. He has some insight. I would like to hear what he might have to say. Chris Gorman, 32 Pine Lane. Um, so the this article, I believe, is based off of uh, some town improvement committee uh, 
discussions back in 2022, I believe. Um, this article, it pretty much funds a full fire alarm system throughout the space. Um, the difference is with Ms. what Mr. Chafee was saying, if we are required to install a sprinkler system, the actual fire alarm system that's proposed is um, is overkill. It's 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 much more than what's needed um, with the sprinkler system, which if you went by the building code, we would be required to put in a full suppression system. Um, IBC 903.2.1.3 um, states that any um, assembly uh, A3 space that has um, an exit over the first floor, over a ground level, is required to have a full sprinkler system. Um, therefore, the fire alarm system that's being proposed would be overkill for what would technically be needed by the time we put in systems. Um, in conjunction, to have an elevator, you are required to have a fire alarm system. So it is multifaceted. It's very um, intricate. It's definitely uh, it's definitely more than just, just these two articles that are going to be provided for um, full ADA compliance. Okay. Over here. I have a question actually for Chris. Um, did they get a quote for the 80 grand or was it just to clarify, so it was just a discussion, so there is no quotes for the 80 grand. So there, are, I provided an estimate yeah. two years ago for that, and it was around that number. Um, I believe they had an actual uh, survey done um, before I was asked about this, and I think it was right around 80 grand as well, 72. Okay. Yeah, so 72, about five years ago, it's probably a little bit more than that right now, so that's a rough estimate. All set? Okay. Any further debate? All right. Uh, so the uh, motion is to transfer from free cash the sum of $80,000 to install a fire alarm system for the town hall. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. No. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article 31. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer the remaining funds of $16,260.33 voted on June 3rd, 2022 annual town meeting under Article 19 for the 350th celebration to be reallocated to technology upgrades. Motion has been made to transfer the remaining funds of $16,260.33 voted on June 3rd, 2022 annual town meeting under Article 19 for the 350th celebration to be reallocated allocated to technology upgrades. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Is there any debate on the motion? Not a debate, but um, what do you, where is this money going? Technologies upgrade? For what? For who? What department? What building? Somebody where's, answer that? Where is it going? We seem to be throwing money around here tonight pretty loosely. <clears throat> Can anybody answer the question? So the preponderance of that is going to be for a server upgrade. The balance of it is is going to be available for replacement of some fairly obsolete computers. I don't have the list with me tonight. Okay. Any further debate? The motion is to transfer remaining funds of 16,260 bucks. $260.33 voted on June 3rd, uh, 2022 annual town meeting under Article 19 for the 350th celebration to be reallocated to technology upgrades. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number 32. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town appropriate $10,904.65 from opioid settlement funds, special purposes stabilization fund for the purchase of Narcan and or other opioid treatment expenses. The motion is to uh, appropriate $10,904.65 from the... Um, from the Opioid Settlement Fund's Special Purpose Stabilization Fund uh, for the purpose purchase of Narcan and or other opioid treatment expenses. Is there a second? second? There is a second. I just want to call everyone's attention that this will take a two-thirds vote. All right. Is there any debate on the motion?
I just have a comment. Can't we get Narcane from the uh, DPH or, you know, any of the state agencies for free? Our fire and police departments have to pay for the Narcan we get. So that would come out of that would come out of their budget. It's currently coming out of their budget until we started getting the opioid settlement funds last year. Now they're able to use this money to get it. Okay, so right as of this point, right now, there is money available for the Narcan. Yep. And and just a comment, Narcan does not work on uh, uh, what was that one there? The the fentanyl. Yeah, it, it doesn't work on that, but. I mean, we could really cut the cost down if we could get the. And if you go to New Hampshire, everybody is carrying around Narcan and a Glock. But that's another another issue. So, <laughs> okay, just a little, uh, little humor uh, in the uh, back, uh, huh? Uh, uh, it works for them. What can I say? Uh, mm -hmm. Anything further? No, I mean, if we can get a free, maybe we'll save some money. You know. I mean, All right. And it's not only the DPH, but. Um, there are other agencies specializing in uh, opioid treatment. So. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yep. Uh, ma'am. Ma'am. Uh, I'm sorry. Could you take your seat? Thank you. I just have a comment to make, Mr. Moderator, if I sure. may, sure. regarding this topic. My name is Nikki Chafee, Fisdale Road. As a nurse in the community, I just want to make sure everyone is aware that the cost of NACAN is going up. It is not readily available to all communities. It is not allowed for students to carry. And unfortunately, as we are aware, students are carrying and ha having exposure to this more and more. The other part that needs to be considered is there are many resources being used that these funds are being wasted on, not in the sense of wasted, meaning they're not appropriate, but effects that would not necessarily be. What I'm referring to is there are many calls that are made in the community for opioid overdoses that have a police officer or EMS respond to then are allowed to reject being cared for. So we are having our services go. That's not saying people can't still call and use it, but this would give a locked box, if you have not seen these objects um, in many areas, the ability. It's just giving us a safer way of still controlling it, as far as I am under the impression and aware. So if I could just um, suggest, if you have any ideas for, or anyone in the community has ideas for what we could spend, um, we. The money that we're receiving that has gone into this opioid settlement stabilization fund, which we are now moving just to an article because you can't spend directly out of stabilization funds. You have to move it to an article. All of this money that we've received came directly from Johnson & Johnson, from, uh, I'm not going to remember all the drug companies' names, but it is the settlement funds that they had to pay out to Mass the state of Massachusetts that was then divvied up to all of the towns. Um, so it was free money to the towns to spend on any opioid related expenses so we can purchase Narcan we can do any type of drug treatment um, education anything so if you have any sort of ideas feel free to reach out to the select and the fire chief the police chief um, because we do have quite a bit of money to use and other than Narcan we haven't done much with it T <laughs> so town, thank town you council. Town Council does say that it is limited on what we can spend it on, but, but nevertheless, yeah. yep. is there any further debate uh, on the motion uh, to appropriate $10,904.65 from the Opioid Settlement Fund Special Purpose Stabilization Fund for the purpose of Narcan and or other opioid treatment expenses? Any further debate? All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. Yeah, I have it. The, article is, the motion is adopted. Article 33. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town authorize select board to grant non-exclusive easement within the town-owned land as printed in Article 33 of the annual town warrant. Okay, um, before I go any further with that, I just want to state that that was a unanimous vote. 
Thank you. Sorry. Motion has been made to authorize the select board to grant a non-exclusive easement within town-owned land as printed in Article 33 of the annual town warrant. Is there a second? There is a second. Uh, I do want to tell everybody, if they're not aware, if it's not in the, uh, the thing there, uh, that this is going to require a two-thirds vote. Any debate? Mr. Moderator, Bill Simpson, um, this is uh, the request for this came from uh, at my parents' property at 37 Upper River Street. We are looking to update the septic system, which was installed a long time ago. Um, the problem is, I think, the way the town built the roads around the house, it now the town's property and the septic system overlap. Um, so to renovate the system, we can't even do a perk test in that area without having rights from the town to use this space um, for this purpose. So this is a request um, to the townspeople to allow us to redo or study and potentially redo our septic system at 37 Upper River Street, where the septic is, um, but we just can't do that because that's uh, incorporated into the right of way that the town owns. It wouldn't be encroaching on the road at all, it would just be in the right of way that extends from the center of the road. So, and I can answer questions if people have some. Anybody have any debate or questions or otherwise? <laughs> All right, the motion is uh, to authorize the select board to grant a non-exclusive easement within town-owned land as printed in Article 33 of the annual town warrant. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The vote is unanimous. It's adopted. Uh, article number 34. Yeah. Mr. Moderator, I move the town authorize the select board to grant a non-exclusive easement with the town-owned land as printed in the Article 34 of the annual town warrant. Motion has been made to authorize the select board to grant non-exclusive easement within town-owned land as printed in Article 34 of the annual town warrant. Is there a second? Second. I heard a second. Uh, so the motion is on the floor. Is there any debate? But before we go there, uh, this again requires a two-thirds vote. Is there any debate on the motion? Not a debate, but, um, well, okay, I just answered one of my questions. I wanted to know who the uh, owner of this property was. Um, second of all, I understand, and I checked, it's state-owned state land. It's not town-owned land, unless there's been some change. Um, so I want to see uh, where we stand on that. Come Can on. anybody address the question of state versus town? Greg Fagno, 147 Lake Road. Hold on one second. I just, I just want to get to the, the, the question. Oh. Richard? To Mr. Holcraft, I spoke to the town council. Whether it's town land or state land, we don't know at this time. However, if we give approval tonight, it could be used. If it's state land, the owner will have to get authorization from the state later. Good to know. Thank you. Okay. We good? Good. Go ahead. Okay. Greg Fagno. I have looked into this. My parents have been taking care of that piece of property since 1940. Um, we've had our septic system there since 1984. Um, I have looked into it. My lawyers have looked into it. We've dealt with the Worcester County Highway, who was supposedly owned it. Worcester County Highway said they did not own it. It was a town-owned piece of property. Um, I'm just looking to replace the septic system on that property and I've just been waiting and waiting and it's just getting dragged out and dragged out and just my lawyer is also here if we need to clarify anything else um, she hasn't been recognized yet because she came in a little bit late but if there's any other questions hopefully she can help square things away okay um, is there any further debate Uh, first of all, before we go there, is there any objection to rec to allowing the, the, the attorney to... Where is the attorney? Hi. Okay. Any objection to allowing attorney to speak if so required? Hearing none, that's it's adopted. Okay, go ahead. Debate. Okay. I'm Sherry Zitter from 149 Lake Road, so I am uh, next to the property that we're talking about, and um, I just want to say that um, I've lived, I lived next to Gloria for a very long time before she passed last year and 
this is the only, I mean, in order for Greg to sell this property, the septic has to pass Title V. So it would just be the place where it is, the existing septic is just putting a new one in. So I hope that the citizens will support that. Okay. Any further debate on the motion? Okay, the motion is to authorize the select board to grant non-exclusive easement within the town owned land as printed in Article 34 of the end of town warrant. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The vote is unanimous. The motion is adopted. Uh, article number 35. Seven. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $70,000 from free cash to the OPEB li <coughs> liability trust fund account. Motion has been made to transfer $70,000 from free cash to the OPEB liability trust fund account. Is there a second? Uh, there is a second. Is there any debate on the motion to transfer 70000 bucks from free cash to the OPEB Liability Trust Fund account? Can you find out what OPEB means? OPEB. Oh, man. Mr. Moderator, through what? you. Yeah, what is it? It's other post-employment benefits. So we have a financial obligation under state law that we're supposed to be trying to catch up to our total obligations to all of our retirees and all of our current employees to cover the expenses other than their Worcester County retirement uh, in advance. Uh, frankly, in a community this size, we will probably never get to our actuarial number that we are supposed to carry for these purposes. Uh, however, we have started to make some motions to at least get a portion of that into place. And that's why it's different than what's in your book is because where we freed up another $20,000 earlier in the meeting, rather than leaving that money there to, to flow over into next year's free cash, our recommendation would be to go ahead and fund that at a slightly higher amount so that we get a tiny bit closer to complying with that state law. Is there any further debate? Uh, or do you, do you have, do you, do you want to, any further debate? I'll leave it at that. Okay, the motion is to transfer $70,000 from free cash to the OPEB Liability Trust Fund account. Uh, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number 36. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $60,000 from free cash for the purpose of funding of a new roof for the elementary school. Motion has been made to transfer $60,000 from free cash for the purpose of funding a new roof for the elementary school. Is there a second? Second. I heard a second. Is there any debate on the motion? Oh, Mr. Cook was up first there, Mr. Holcraft. I have, a, I have a question about this. When I was on the elementary school committee and we had to do some roof work, we took it out of school choice funds. How come this is not the case? If someone on the elementary school board to answer that? Yeah, if you're on the elementary school committee. I am an elected official of the ele elementary school board committee. Nikki Chafee, Vistel Road now. Uh, so it's not that we're not using funds from school choice or other reserves. We've actually been using all that. Uh, I'm not sure the last time that the school has asked for any additional money, but what is coming up is we had ESSER funds that were established during COVID. Those have now, after three years, been withdrawn, and we need additional funds. We have done a lot of patchwork. We have done a lot of investigating. We've done our own thermal imagery that the school board has approved and been paying for independently with the funds already allocated to us. We need to do more in order for our students to be here. Anyone who has kids that have been here, your kids have probably talked about how in the hallways sometimes there are leaks that we have to put buckets under. It's unfit, there's mold issues, and now it's gotten to the point where it's past any additional funds unless we start taking away functions within the school. So if we were to use any money that is currently allocated with our elementary school fund, my understanding as being a part of that board member is we would then be risked to reduce any positions that are there. We would be asked to cut programs. It would directly affect the education and the care of these students and wouldn't be doing right by them. 
Okay, thank you. What's the uh, total cost for the elementary school roof to be done over? Anybody know? I'm sorry. And are you doing the whole building or just part of it? The end goal of the elementary school board committee is to have the entire roof fixed appropriately so that we're not doing these piecemeals every year. However, I do not have an exact quote in front of us. I do know that it was much more than what we're asking for. What we're asking for is what we know that we will not be able to contribute without, again, removing either job roles or programs available. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. What is it? So the roof replacement budget was estimated between 1.5 million and 1.8 million. There you go. And, uh, another quick question. Where's that money coming from? They have that much in school choice? Uh, uh, treasurer, do we, do we, do you, do you Just know Just out of curiosity. Do you know that? How much they have in school choice? The balance in school choice right now is 712,796. Does anybody know where the rest of that money's coming from? I'm not opposed to have them fixing the building. I'm not I'm just curious where this money's coming from. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I uh, yes, so I cannot speak to all of the money that we have that for, but we are doing our own independent. We have support from PTO. We have pr support from the community at whole, and we do have private factors that have been willing to donate as long as it's, again, to the improvement of the school and the students within it. We are doing everything within our power to ask as little from the community, even though this is a community elementary school that is only for this community. Okay, thank you. Any further debate? The motion is to transfer $60,000 from free cash for the purpose of funding a new roof for the elementary school. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number 37. Okay, who's making the motion? Come on, let's get on it. I move that the town authorize the select board to petition the general court for special legislation as printed in Article 37 of the annual town um, meeting warrant. Um... The motion is to authorize the select board to petition the general court for special legislation as printed in Article 37 of the annual town meeting warrant. Is there a second? I heard a second. Is there any debate uh, on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of authorizing the select board to petition the general court for a speci special legislation as printed in Article 37 of the annual town meeting warrant say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number 38. M Mr. Moderator, I move that the town amend the general bylaws, Chapter 12, miscellaneous bylaw, Section 4, as printed in Article 38 of the annual town meeting warrant. Motion has been, been, has been made to amend the general laws, Chapter uh, 12, miscellaneous bylaw, Section 4, as printed in Article 38 of the annual town meeting warrant. Is there a second? Second. Is there any, is there any debate uh, on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of amending the general bylaws, Chapter 12, miscellaneous bylaws, Section 4, as printed in Article 38 of the annual town meeting, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number 39. Okay. 
Um, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town has State Representative Donald R. Berthium Jr. file legislation to have the Commonwealth establish and fund a passenger rail station in Mill Street in Brookfield. Motion has been made to authorize State Representative Donald R. Berthium Jr. to file legislation to have the Commonwealth establish a fund establish and fund a passenger rail station on Mill Street in Brookfield. Is there a second to the motion? There is a second. Okay. Defend your motion. Okay, Mr. Moderator. For those of you who are not aware, this, the federal government has given the state of Massachusetts money to expand rail service from the city of Worcester to the city of Springfield. It is proposed putting in a rail station in Palmer. From the point of view of the state's transportation network, it would make sense to put in Brookfield to alleviate the tr road traffic on the Mass Pike. In addition to which, if you were to put a st station or stop in Mill Street, Mr. Cook, could you just, uh, Mr. Cook, please just back away from the microphone. Back a bit. away from the mic. No, not, not, not that, not that much. Just okay. you know, not, not be better don't, if I don't be right all over it because it's 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 distorting. Yeah, okay. It's distorting. And we Do you want me hear? to go from the top? Oh, that's way yeah. too close. Yeah, no, yeah, okay. no, 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 no. Just keep right going here. from where you started. Okay. I mean, from where you left off. Okay. Um, from the point of view of the state's transportation network, if you want to alleviate traffic on the Mass Pike, it would make a lot of sense to put a rail stop in Brookfield. In addition to which, if you look at Mill Street, it has one of the most important facets you need for a rail station. There's ample parking available there. From our point of view, putting a passenger station on in this town would act as an economic catalyst for probably the spur small business growth. If you look back a hundred years ago, there was a larger commercial and industrial sector in Brookfield when railroads were the dominant mode of transportation in the United States. I think we need to have some vision as to how we can provide an economic catalyst for this town, and I think a real station would do that. Bear in mind, even though the Representative Berthium would file this, such a station is likely several years away. If you look at the state's current financial picture, uh, they're in trouble. Um, but that said, at some point the state has talked about expanding rail service from Boston to the city of Pittsfield. If we were to raise our hand now, the State Department of Transportation at some point would look on probably putting a stop here in Brookfield. All right, thank you. Any further debate? Just so you know, if you actually approve this nightmare, multifamily zoning requirement for MBTA communities is as follows. Minimum, minimum gross density of 15 units per acre located, in, located not more than 0 0.5 miles from a commuter rail station, subway station, ferry terminal, or station if applicable. No age restrictions are suitable for families with children. What this is going to make this, what's going to make happen is the state of Massachusetts is going to put Section 8 housing in our town. And I think that is absolutely absurd. Places like Holden and other towns are fighting this tooth and nail. We should not be putting this here. Let it go. Let them put their railway station and their Section 8 housing project somewhere else. Any further debate? Uh, Mr. Moderator, through you, um, I would be curious to understand how Section 8 would be here. My understanding is that these are zoning rules for density, and I am not crazy about those, but I would, I would caution Section 8 is how people are funded through their, uh, for rental housing. This is the, the law here that a lot of towns are fighting is high density zoning, and um, Holden is one town, Milton is another that I've read of. and. I would say they, they already had their service when the law was passed for the zoning. If we ask for this when the law is already on the books, we're going to have no standing to push back. And it is going to change the character of our town. And therefore, we sh if that's what we want, that's what we want. But we should know that's what's going to happen if this train station comes in. Um, I agree with uh, Mr. Regan's assessment of um, the difference between Section 8 housing and multifamily housing. That said, while I agree in, in principle with Mr. Cook's suggestion, I, my objection to this mainly is that I don't believe there will be ample parking in Brookfield for a train station. 
I don't even have any idea where Mr. Cook, and maybe he can answer this after I'm through, where he sees ample parking. Um, the properties all around the railroad station, uh, the proposed railroad station in Mill Street, are all private property. Um, if we were to see a station to alleviate the traffic in Route 20 and the Pike, I would prefer to see it, and we have no power over this, but I would prefer to see it on the flats on East Brookfield, which is a, a large portion of it is already owned by the railroad. It's level with grade. There is ample space there for parking. I think putting it in Mill Street, while an admirable idea, practically would not work. And then the final thing is it would be attracting traffic up 148 and to the Mill Street intersection where we've got like four roads all intersecting in that place. It would be a traffic nightmare. Thank you. Okay. Hang on one second. Anybody else um, want to speak before we... Okay, Mr. Cook, go for broke. Okay. Um, yes, I'm aware that there's a current battle going on in the courts between the AG over high density zoning for communities that have rail stop. Um, <laughs> we don't know how that's going to play out, for one. Second of all, this is a long term. They may change the law. There's a lot of people really upset with that law and it may be changed. This is at least 10 years away. But general comment. You know, the town of Brookfield, there are a lot of people here who want things in this town. Back away from the microphone yeah, a little there bit. Lot, there we go. Yeah. You got it. There are a lot of people in this town who want things. You need money to pay for it. I think everything now is saddled on the homeowner. I heard Al Jones, our former town assessor, tell the selectman just how little commercial and industrial property we have in this town. My problem having lived here 40 years is we have a lack of vision. If you people want to live in a little town, then you better learn to live with that all you're going to have is what a little town has. Thank you. Um, let me see where to begin. First off, I, I, I don't think that uh, even if Section 8 were to come into our town, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't prevent it if we wanted to. That's number one. Number two, um, the parking situation and the traffic situation, that can be handled by re-trafficking and, and redesigning the roads as part of the build-out for a train station. So there are all kinds of things that would come into play and things would not be the existing way that it is if you did that. He's proposing the Mill Street site doesn't necessarily mean that that would be the right site. Maybe the right site would be where the old um, rest area used to be. You never know. You don't, you know, there's, or um, you could handle it a different way. But to absolutely say, no, we don't want it in this town, it would bring homes into this town. Because let's face it, anybody that's going to be commuting to Boston on a train isn't going to be a Section 8 person, per se. They're going to be people who are professionals, who are going to move into town, who are going to have children, who are going to need services, and they're going to be commuting to Boston, and their income is going to be a whole lot higher than what our demographics are now. So, honestly, there is, it, there's not a, it's, it's not a bad solution, I mean, it's a little premature to go to, to uh, Mr. Berthium at this point, but I think that uh, it's, it is a potential idea, and it has been a potential idea for a while. All right. Time's up. Actually is. Any further uh, debate on the question of whether or not to uh, ask Representative Donald Berthium uh, to file special legislation to have the Commonwealth establish a fund, establish and fund uh, a passenger rail station on Mill Street in Brookfield. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. No. I, I, I need a count. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are we good? All those in favor, please stand up.
Ooh, well, I missed all that one, didn't I? All right, please sit down. All those opposed, please stand. The no's have it. The motion fails. Uh, article number um, 40. Okay. Mr. Moderate, I move that we raise the town moderate salary to $100 per meeting. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I'm so sorry. Um, a motion has been made to raise the town moderator's salary to $100 per meeting. Uh, is there a second? second? There's a second. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, a motion has been made uh, to raise the town moderator's salary from $100 per meeting. Uh, I do want to just inform town meeting that um, um, this is only going to be an advisory motion because we've my the, the moderator's salary is coming out of the budget which has already been voted on, That's true. okay? And so this is advisory to maybe the advisory committee or the slackman or, or whatever. Well, you you know, I, I don't wanna, I, I just want town meeting to understand that you're not raising my salary off of this, such as it is. Uh, I just wanna make sure that everybody understands that this is just advisory. Okay, Mr. Cook, I'm sorry, okay. go I ahead. I've lived in town for 40 years. The moderator has always been paid $50 per meeting. I think it's about time we gave him or her a raise. Thank you. Any other debate? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of raising the town moderator's salary to 100 bucks a meeting, say aye. aye. All those opposed, say no. no. Uh, the ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Okay. Article 41. Mr. Moderator, I move that we replace Chapter 10, Section 8 of the Town Balls with what's printed as following in the annual meeting warrant. A uh, motion has been made uh, for the town to vote to replace uh, Chapter 10, Section 8 of the Town Bylaws as printed in Article is it 40 or 40? 41 uh, of the Town Meeting Warrant. Uh, meeting warrant. Uh, is there a second? There's a second. Okay. okay, Mr. Cook. Okay. We currently have S Section 8, which specifies that the selectmen have to approve a parade if it's held on a public road in the town of Brookfield. Um, what this revised bylaw would do would expand that to any activity on a public roadway, bicycle race, etc. It would also establish some consequences, fines for individual or event organizers, and also would require a public meeting to be held before the selectmen authorize such an event. The reason why I bought this is for the past couple of years on Rice Corner Road, there has been a bike race. Okay, I don't know who, who has approved it, but if you know Rice Corner Road, it's not the particularly the most safest road to even navigate one or two bicyclists on as you drive along it. So that was what prompted me to bring this, and when I looked at the bylaw, it goes back at least 100 years, and it really needs to be updated. Okay. Is there any further uh, debate uh, on the motion? I've, I've got, yep. Mr. Moderator, if we adopt this, then I'd like to amend it that we change the word selectman to select board. It's mentioned multiple times. So is there any objection to uh, striking selectmen and inserting select board? Anybody object to that, Mr. Cook? Okay, good. So, uh, uh, hold on one moment. Okay, hold on, hold on. So, um, there's no problem with that. However, uh, Mr. Cook, um, uh, the, the $500 uh, that's in there, 
Uh, apparently the limit is 300 bucks. Uh, so if it's adopted, it's likely to be kicked, kicked back by the AG's office. Would, do, do, are you okay with 300 bucks? Yes, I am. He's okay with 300 bucks. So uh, very well. So go ahead. I have a question again. Mr. Cook might be able to answer this. When he says public roads, does that include state roads? And if so, do we have jurisdiction to enact this type of a bylaw that affects state roads in Brookfield? Uh, town Council is shaking her head no, so I'm assuming that's no. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Moderator, uh, through you, I have a question or two for Mr. Cook. Specifically, um, in the event that a, an event were held and the route went through Brookfield and one cyclist at a time came through every five minutes, would that violate this law and subject to these penalties, even though they did not obstruct traffic? Um, well, the question might be better put to town council, but I would say that any event organized on a town public byway, again, the original bylaw says parade on a town public way, so I assume it excludes a state road. Um, it, it, again, what the intent here is to upgrade the law. If someone wants to hold a bike race, a motorbike race, any event that's going to take use the town public roads, they need the selectman's permission. Uh, with the remainder of my time, I'd like to address this question to Chief Blanchard. Uh, Chief Blanchard, in your opinion, is this law necessary or do we have sufficient rules to deal with events that overly obstruct a public right-of-way in town? Uh, whether it's a bike race or a, uh, a parade or any other type of event. Huh? Please come up. So what exactly is your question? Chief, the question was, um, in, in your opinion as the chief of police, do the, exi um, do the existing rules and bylaws of the town uh, provide you with sufficient tools in order to maintain the um, freedom of use of the uh, right of way and to deal with um, people who are you hogging the road and clogging it up whether it's through a bike race an unauthorized parade or a road race or in your opinion is this necessary or useful you got 35 seconds oh geez uh, I, I think we have adequate rules and regulations for the road uh, the only thing i can think of right now there's only a couple races that come into town i don't know where this bike race comes from I know there's a road race that comes up from Tantasra that goes up to Mr. Cook's house. There's also one that goes from the high school around that section. But there is some sort of bike race that every year when I come into work, I see little colored arrows telling people where to go. I, I've never seen the race. Nobody's ever complained about the race. Like, I don't even know anything about the race. It doesn't seem to be a problem. Is that the bike race you're talking about? Yeah, it's a problem. I, I don't, I've never got a complaint about it. I just noticed the markers on the road okay. telling where to turn. All right. And I think it encompasses more than our town is yeah. that correct right but we can't. so no, I, I, right. I i think chief is has is basically saying that um current current bylaw i i'm not i'm just saying what he said current bylaw is sufficient okay uh is there any further debate uh on the question okay hearing none um the motion is to vote to replace chapter 10 section 8 of the town bylaws as printed in article 41 of the annual town meeting warrant all those in favor say aye Aye. oh we changed it to i'm sorry we it has been i'm going to do that again um we did change 500 to 300 and uh it's now select board rather than select men okay i'm sorry i got to do this again all those in favor say aye aye all those opposed say no no uh, the no's have it uh the motion fails uh, Article 42. Okay. Mr. Moderator, I move that we add the following section to Chapter 2 of the Town Bylaws. Electronic voting buttons will be used at all town meetings to tally and record all votes during the proceedings. A motion has been made uh, to amend um, uh, the Town Bylaws to 
uh, to add the following section to chapter two of the town bylaws uh, that electronic voting buttons will be used at all town meetings to tally and record all votes uh, during the proceedings. Is there a second? I heard a second. second. Thank you. Th second. Uh, I just need to sort of point out to town meeting uh, that if this is adopted, there is a conflict currently with this uh, in section 13, uh, and it may come back to us, but I just want everybody to be aware uh, of that. Uh, so, okay. Mr. Cook. Well, therefore, I'll, I'll amend my motion. You basically you want to rescind chapter section 13 of the town bylaws and replace it with the new section. Okay. So, uh, if you accept the friendly motion, I'll give it to you. So, hang on one second. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Cook is now looking to amend uh, to, um, uh, to, to add at the beginning yep. to strike uh, current uh, Section 13 uh, and replace it with a new Section 13 uh, that uh, states electronic voting buttons will be used at all town meetings to tally and record all votes during the proceedings. Is there a second to the motion? There's a second of the motion. Okay, we are now debating an amendment uh, to the main motion uh, to sort of strike section 13 uh, and uh, insert this new language into it, okay? All right, um, Mr. Cook, it's your motion to amend, so I'm gonna let you have at it. Yeah, well, I, again, I was just alerted to this possible conflict like this morning. Um, so it's my fault I forgot to state it. I should have stated it first, resend. Did you have, uh, did you want to say something? I just have a question. Did we, I guess it's for the selectmen, did we get the voting buttons already as an approved grant? So we yes, have they them, are. correct? Yes, we do. Yep. Okay. Mr. Moderator, question uh, for the amendment is specifically what is section 13 that we're striking? I'm not familiar with it and it's not in the uh, text. So could you please help us? Thank you so much for that question. I was so ready for this. I just love you. Thank you. You're no, section 13 currently says when a question is put, that is when I ask you to vote, the sense of the meeting shall be determined by the voices of the voters and the moderator shall declare the vote as it appears to him. If the moderator is unable to decide the vote, sorry, hang on, is unable to decide the vote by the sound of the voices, or if his decision is immediately questioned, he shall determine the vote by ordering a standing vote, and he may appoint tellers to make and return the count. So that is the current uh, section 13. Anything else? All right. So. Uh, we still have the motion to amend, uh, which is basically just going to strike this language and insert the new language. Uh, any further debate on this? All right. Did I, excuse me. Did I hear that we have the voting buttons already? Yes. We have the equipment? We do. And it costs us nothing? It was a grant. Oh, okay. Thank you. As I understand it. Yeah. We've already bought this technology. All this bylaw does is codify it. it. It replaces what was the formal practice of having the town moderator uh, tally the votes. All right. So uh, the motion is to amend the main motion to strike uh, the current language of section 13 uh, and add uh, the following language. Electronic voting buttons will be used at all town meetings to tally and record all votes during the proceedings. Uh, did you want to debate? Yes. Okay. Go. If we strike that completely, what do we do if the system goes down? Uh, I, I really, the, the meeting would have to be postponed or, or, or adjourned to a, a different time until the, the buttons are, there's no fail safe in this. As I understand it. Uh, Can I okay, this is the second time on the amendment, so I, I, you have more time on the other one because you okay, but I just want to well, let you know. I, I, 
here's the issue. You've already bought this technology. When you bought it, you should have an amendment in the town bylaws specifying its use. And that's why I put this forward. Any further debate? Yes, I see. We have further debate. Just, uh, Chris Roberts, 30 Pine Lane. Um, just to address the fail safe, could a, kind of maybe a friendly amendment? Um, could we maybe keep the language that's already in Chapter 13? I don't know exactly. That might be for council how to exactly word it. But keep the language in 13 as a fail safe, like if the electronic system is not working the day of voting or something along those lines, we have a backup plan. <laughs> Because it seems like there were some people that had some. Yeah, uh, I didn't bring the language with me. Oh. Uh, you could add some language to this. Yeah. Uh, that would. I just don't know what the basically language say. Would be. Uh, what would it say, Richard? Um, uh, we could take it right from yeah, Article second. 13 and just yeah. put it back in place if the equipment if, fails. Right, right. So, don't striking it. But this is in, in front of it. Kennedy's, I'm just checking with. Yeah, no problem. Go ahead. Uh, why would you even bother? Why would you even bother taking out voice? Well, the voters. Because then you just, just add. Or actually, the reverse. Actually, it needs to be the reverse. Um, something to the effect of. All right, um, so what you would want to do is you would want to add, after uh, the electronic voting buttons will be used at all town meetings to tally uh, and record all votes during the proceedings, period. You want to add, if the voting buttons fail, the moderator may uh, take the sense, determine the sense uh, of uh, the meeting by uh, the voices of and then the rest of section current section 13. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm doing here? Yeah. So we will have to use the voting machines, but if for some reason technology fails and it never does, <laughs> right, uh, we would then fall back to the current section 13. Are we good? Yes, good. I does anybody object to that? Anybody object to that? All right. So uh, we've got uh, we've got a, a motion to amend uh, that basically uh, is um, to um, amend uh, Chapter Two, uh, Section Thirteen, by striking Section Thirteen, the current language to Section Thirteen. Um, or yes. Uh, and inserting electronic voting buttons will be used at all town meetings to tally and record all votes during the proceedings, period. If the voting machine, if the voting buttons fail, 
the moderator may determine the sense of the meeting by the voices of the voters and the moderator shall declare the vote as it appears to him, period. If the moderator is unable to decide the vote by the sound of the voices or if his decision is immediately questioned, he shall determine the vote by ordering a standing vote and he may appoint tellers to make and return the count. That's the motion to amend the main motion, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. So, uh, is there any? Uh, you, we're already we're already past that stage. Thank you. Anyway, uh, uh, so is there any further debate uh, on this on this wonderful motion that Mr. Cook has crafted? One, uh, are you? Do you really want to debate this? <laughs> No, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to deter you or anything. But sit back up. down, for heaven's sake. <laughs> yeah, right. No, 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 no. Come on, what were you gonna say? No, 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 no. I mean, somebody has to set this up and all that. I mean, you're just <laughs> so. We really have all of this together. Yes, we do. Yeah, and it's, it, it's there. actually it's actually very nice technology. I mean, it really is. It, and and it's so oh. uh, you know. I, uh, I'm not. I'm just saying we have the technology. It is there, and it's not. It's not really that difficult. Do we have enough for everybody in the town? That how many? Can vote? How many? How many other things do we have? Three hundred. Okay. We have three hundred. Okay. If we ever want to build a new school someplace, I don't think three hundred is going to be enough. But hey, just saying. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. So, is there any further debate? Uh, on this motion to amend, okay? Basically, the motion is to amend uh, Town Bylaw Chapter 2, Section 13 by striking it and inserting electronic voting buttons will be used at all town meetings to tally or record all uh, votes according, uh, during the proceedings period uh, and then most of the language in current Section 13. Uh, all those in favor uh, of this amendment, say aye. Aye. And all those opposed, say no. Oh, that's wonderful. The motion to amend has been adopted. Now we're back to the main motion, which is basically the motion to amend. All those in favor of the main motion as amended, say aye. aye. All those opposed, say no. Uh, the ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Mr. Cook, thank you very much. We're done. Article 43. Are we good? Got to bear with me on this one. I got thrown under the bus on this one. Um, Article 43. See if the town will vote to amend the personal bylaw by adding chapter 15, section 27, longevity pay, and add the following language. Longevity stipends will be paid at the end of a fiscal year to all regular, full, and part-time employees for continuous years of service. Town personnel policies and procedures may provide further definition of the calculation of continuous service and the schedule for payment of longevity pay. Five to seven years, $600. Eight to 11 years, $750. 12 years to 14 years, $1,000. 20 years and beyond, $1,500. Laurie, do you have a total? I don't think you need a total. No, no. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. No. Hey, hang on. I, uh, whoa, whoa. What do we, what, uh, so, all right. That's the motion, right? That's the motion. Okay. So a motion has been made, okay, uh, to amend the personnel bylaw, chapter 15, to add section 27. Is that correct? To add section 27 as printed, I have it written, as printed in the annual town meeting warrant. You've already read all of that material. Yep. Is there a second of the motion? Okay, there's a second. Now you may debate. The reason for this is I believe two, con well, I believe the police and the library have this longevity pay already. I'm just trying to introduce it for the rest of the town employees. Okay. Any... You want to say anything more, Amy? Okay. No, I, I think Any? longevity pays where we have to be today. Okay. All right. Because people don't stick around too long anymore. All right. Any further debate on the motion? 
Uh, oh, hey. I got I got a couple of people here. Hey. Uh, so hey. I, I got I got down here. Uh, okay, hello, folks. I got I got down treasure. So we paid out longevity pay this fiscal year because we were bound to it by the article that was voted last year. The longevity pay that we voted cost us $36,800, which was actually more than we allocated last year. And we had to approach the advisory committee for a reserve fund transfer. Longevity pay is typically done in communities where there is constant turnover, and longevity pay is done to keep employees. We don't have a turnover here. Um, so the, the amount voted would be approximately $40,000 you would need every year because the chart would keep increasing every year. So just some basic information. Okay. You're up. Okay. For a person being in her job for 37 years, I know all about longevity. But I'm not a municipal employee. I'm a private sector employee. As a private sector employee, I get bonuses, I get raises. As a municipality, you make that choice to work for the municipality, which means you make a choice not to get a bonus. This is a bonus. I don't care how you, how, how you spin it, it is a bonus. It is extra money that you're getting because you've been at your job as long as you have. The advisory board over here did not recommend this. This is on top of the raises that we give. We give substantial raises. 4% is higher than, a cor than the, the quarry raise or, or the cost of living raise. So we're already giving out higher raises. So why would we give out an additional amount of money for longevity when really we have a lot of employees in our town that are probably in the 20 plus range? So. The only thing that this does is it puts, it gives the, it makes the taxpayers pay our employees more money than what they're already receiving as a paycheck because we have turnover. When is the last time that we really had any major turnover in this town? And one employee here, one employee there, but not many. Uh, uh, hold on one second, please. Someone's speaking at the microphone. If we could please keep the voices down, I'd appreciate it. Okay, continue. No, 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 no. Uh, please, address me. Thank you. They have more than an ample opportunity to get up and say something. Yeah. yeah. So, Finish up. what I'm saying is, is that I don't believe that we should vote. Last year, the intent was to give a longevity payment to people because of things that happen with COVID and working and so on and so forth. And it was supposed to be some kind of incentive for these people. But to give it to them on a yearly basis, that is not what the intent for this longevity was for. This longevity fee was only supposed to be for one year. Now you're looking at expending $40,000 a year, every year, for as, for as long as or more as the time goes on. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Am I next? Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Where's all this money coming from? We got a special account for this one too? The money from last year that we voted um, went into an article. Um, the 31100 we asked for a reserve fund transfer, and that money came from the reserve fund to fund the remaining money that I needed to make this year's payments. There is currently no money associated with this article. You took money out of the reserve for, 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 for uh, wages? Reserve fund, yes. I didn't think you could do that. You can. Oh, okay. I was on the advisory board for umpteen years, and... We never did that ever. Nope. You can transfer from okay. the reserve fund for any. All right. So that's what this. So every year, uh, this every year this will increase in value. It would if we voted it oh, in yeah. as a bylaw and fun, chose to fund it. So it's just going to continuously go up. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm opposed to this. 
we have a spending problem in this town. I've sat through an entire meeting where we've used free cash to pay for things to get around the levy limit. Free cash comes from overtaxation of the people. You people have a problem with controlling your budgets in this town. This is just going to be another budget buster if we were to vote this in. And you just turned down the only proposal I have in mind that do anything in spurring economic development to expand the tax base in town. We had a bigger tax base in town 100 years ago than we do now. And you keep wanting and wanting things, and it's all to do is placing a burden on the taxpayer. Get it together. Uh, Mr. Moderator, through you, um, I believe this question should go to the accountant. Um, is there a effective floor to the or limit to the number of hours that someone would need to qualify for this for example if someone averaged five hours a week and they had eight years of service would they qualify for the same bonus as someone who worked full-time for those same eight years so they have to be full-time or part-time benefit eligible so they have to work at least 20 hours a week oh it's benefit eligible yes oh, i missed that part thank you yeah. Is that it hold on well, so actually, like Beth just said, it is not in the language of this this article. When we voted it last year to pay out for this one-time mm -hmm. payment, it was part-time, benefit-eligible, or full-time employees. Okay. So the article as written means that someone who is working five, an average of five hours a week and has been with us um, however many years would receive the same longevity bonus as a full-time employee. It just says regular, full-time, and part-time employees. So yes. And this article also is missing the people who have worked 15 to 19 years of service. So there's flaws in this article. All right. Uh, Mr. Moderator? I move that we amend the article such that uh, to the effect that um, part-time employees have their bonus prorated uh, based on the proportion of their hours compared I'm to a full-time employee. Um, um, I, I will yield to Ms. Coughlin if she has the same idea as me. Um, do you have it written? Hang on one second. He wasn't done and he's offering an amendment and I'm going to give him an opportunity to do so. All right. So, so you, would you give it to him so that he can read it and see if see if it works? I can't read this. Have, have her have Beth have Beth read it, please. Have Beth read it, please. Just through you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, this is this is my proposed amendment. I think it's largely in line with what Mr. Regan was saying. So. Uh, following the word uh, payment, pay, payment of longevity pay, insert the words for employees averaging 20 hours or more per week. The, the text remains the same down to 12 to 14. I'm sorry. Yes. Could you just back up? So yep. I was having a hard time finding payment of longevity pay. So continue. Okay. Or start it, over. It, okay. At that point, insert the words for employees averaging 20 hours or more per week. For employees averaging how many? 20 hours. 20 hours a week. Right, or more per week. Yeah. The table is the same except uh, uh, strike the 4 in 14 and replace it with 9 for 19. And then add... Oh, oh. Okay. So you want to... Oof. So you want to strike the 14 in the years 12 to 14? Right. And what do you want to put in Replace there? Replace that with 19. 19? Yep. And what's the next one? And then following the end of that table, insert the text for employees averaging 19 hours or less per week. And insert a table that reflects the table above, but at 50%. So Hold on. Yep. Averaging 19 hours a week or less N than? 19 hours or less per week. 19 hours per week or less. Yep. And then a table that reflects the same text to the left as the first table, but the, the right-hand side would be $300. Hang on. Yep. Okay. What are the numbers? 300 375, 500, and 750. So the motion to amend uh, is going to add the words 
uh, after for payment of longevity pay, comma, for employees averaging 20 hours per week, you'll have the table that's there with striking 14 and putting 19. And after that, you're going to add further language that says employees averaging 19 hours per week or less uh, will get longevity pay, and I'm just putting these in there, according to uh, the following table, which would have years five through seven at 300 bucks, years eight through 11, 375 bucks, years 12 through 19, $500, and years 20 and beyond, 750. Is that your motion to amend? That is my motion to amend. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded um, to, uh, well, to add the language uh, after uh, payment of longevity pay for employees averaging 20 hours uh, per week with the table except for 14, uh, 19 years instead of 14 in the third row. Uh, and then after the $1,500, you would continue with employees averaging 19, 19 hours a week or less with uh, basically the same years, 300, 375, 500, and 750 bucks. All right, so it's been made and sec amendment has been made and seconded. Is there any debate uh, on the amendment? You want to debate, debate the amendment? Oh, you can. I, 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 that's where we're at. It's not going to go into the depth of the question. It's just this. Yeah. All right. Just, just a quick question. If if somebody <laughs> is, microphone. Thank you. If somebody is working five hours or ten hours, and then they go to twenty hours, is there a mechanics for? All of a sudden, you've been there for twenty years. You get the the higher rate or the lower rate. I mean, it's just who can answer the question know, for us? <laughs> if, if I may, um, Mr. Eaton, the um, I believe the uh, calculation would be based on the number of hours worked in that year and the number of years of service. And so, if someone worked for 20 years at 10 hours per week, they would uh, up until that point they would get the uh, part-time bonus. And then when they went, and then after 20 years, when they went to 23 hours a week, they would then qualify for the full-time bonus, even though that was their first year at full-time. That is my understanding, the intent of the amendment, and I think that is consistent with the wording. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Chafee. I just want to say that the amendment now brings it from 40000 to significantly more. I don't know that we can afford it. We're only speaking on the amendment. We're only speaking on the amendment. That's it. Mr. Chafee, could you elaborate on that, how, the, uh, how that raises the, the uh, total cost? Do you, Ms. Martin. So uh, the calculation that I did for this year was only for full-time, part-time benefited employees. So when we now pay employees that are 19 or less hours a week, that includes everybody else in the town hall that did not receive a stipend this year. But they did get it this year. Um, so if you remember, it was amended on the floor. So here. Yes, you, so, you asked the question. Right. So. Um, uh, Mr. Chaffee, I'd like to point out that the higher cost is inherent okay, in... So, no, I'm no, sorry, okay, so, no, okay. You're, you're addressing Mr. me, Mr. Not Mr. Moderator, Chaffee. may I respond Thank to Mr. Chaffee through you? Thank you. Um, I would say that the higher cost is inherent in the original article that was in there and the amendment reduces it, it's still higher than last year's but it reduces what we would have paid if we don't do the amendment is my observation the amendment lowers the cost it's still higher than last year but it lowers it below what it it's less than what it would have been otherwise all right mr moderator through you uh yeah the calculation may have been against the the um staff that's currently full-time benefited or part-time benefited but the verbiage indicated all employees 
So I, I just want to be clear that that it didn't r the language doesn't raise the calculation. What it does is leaves it less open to interpretation. Okay. Uh, any further debate on the amendment? I, I had a question. My name is John Washburn, 12 Maple Street. Yes, sir. Is this going to be a payout every single year? Mm -hmm. So yes. basically, this is going to go up every go up. year, basically. Yep. Well, it wouldn't so go up. It would be the same. It would be, be the same unless somebody goes from a certain stage to the next stage. Yep. They would get the top, another amount. Yep. Um, this is this is going to raise our. Could you could you speak into the speak into the mic? It's going to raise our uh, budget and everything else so higher just just for uh, bonuses. You know, and that's every year. It's not just one time thing. It's going to be every year. So what's going to our capital is going to go? It's going to take our uh, funds away right quicker every year. It's longer. Any further debate on the? I'm sorry. Any further debate on the amendment? All right. Um, the amendment is to add to the original motion the words after payment of longevity pay for employees averaging 20 hours a week uh, they'll get longevity pay according to the table that's there uh, except 14 years is 19 and then followed by the language employees averaging 19 hours a week or less with the same table uh, will get 300 375 500 and 750 uh, everybody understand the question all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. no. The no's have it. The amendment has failed. Uh, we are back to the main motion, which is to amend the personnel bylaw, chapter 15, to add section 27 as printed in the annual town meeting warrant as it was read. And I'm going to leave it there. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. So again, uh, for those of us who were here last year, uh, the longevity bonus was debated at length, uh, voted in, worked out well. But as uh, I think one of the commenters said earlier, longevity uh, 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 pay is uh, typically a one-off when there are situations where you're losing a lot of employees, a lot of turnover. You really need to keep qualified help all the time here. We voted last year for a one-time event, and I think the select board was clear back then. It was a one-time event, and the select board has the ability going forward to make another one-time event. Our challenge that we have in the town now is without the personnel board, where all this should be happening, right? Here we're doing it on the town meeting floor, and in point of fact, this is personnel board stuff. But the fact of the matter is, along longevity bonus is is not expected to be paid every year again unless every year you're losing a lot there's a lot of turnover of qualified help that takes a long time to, to replace so there's ne never a notion after at the vote last year to have this every year going forward I'm not saying suggesting that at some point in the future the select board may need to put this back in place but this language clearly just says this is every year if that's the case just increase your wages and stop calling it something that it's really not so that's why the select uh, the, that, that's why the advisory committee didn't vote to do this it wasn't funded but at the end of the day it's also putting this requirement annually to pay this again and whatever value it is forty thousand dollars this year a little bit more next year next year next year and again not that we may not need this someday but to make it a, a requirement annually is something that the town just can't afford and you know we passed the budget for what we did just under the the levy limit we spent some free cash tonight but at the end of the day we've got to be thinking about how we're going to manage the the the, the, the cost here and so we're we're uh tim rowan is adamantly opposed to this this uh article so we, we we've got a gentleman there and then i'll and then i'll come to you <clears throat> sean mulligan 17 river street i i agree with mr rowan completely um you know i, I think all of us are in favor of fair pay for our town employees. I, I don't think that the way to determine wages is by citizen petition and this kind of process. This is, you know, and it is just a, this is just a pay raise. I mean, that's really what it is. And I don't think this is the proper way to handle that. Thank you. Oh, right here. 
So I just wanted to follow up on Tim's comments. As chairman of the advisory committee, we normally do not make any sort of votes or discuss citizen petitions. But in this case, we felt that the financial obligation which was implied by putting this into the bylaw, where as Tim said, it's year by year, the selectmen are committed to putting this in, given the circumstances where I don't know if anyone had spoken yet, again, give me two minutes or a minute just to clarify, we came in with a budget that was over the levy limit. We had to make significant cuts this year on a number of various items, which we have never done before to that extent. Putting this in, we felt it was strong. All of us, plus Marty Manish, who is not here tonight, felt very strongly so that we voted unanimously to not have this as a in the bylaw but allow depending on the circumstances with the revenue and the expenses of the town each year to give it this, this discretion to the selectmen to award this if they wish if, if there is money etc not that it's locking it in at this number which is just another large number that we'll have to find to cut somewhere else out of a budget so that was just to, to clarify and to emphasize the importance that the advisory committee gave to this particular item, which was a citizen petition. Um, a, a couple of technicalities. Uh, I'm confused by all the back and forth. I'm not sure I'm for this or against it, but it was called a stipend. And if I got the definition of a stipend it says the definition of a stipend is paid generally paid to interns trainees students in addition to regular pay to offset certain expenses there are tax implications for those receiving stipends they are considered income but not immediately taxed if this is a stipend then do we have a right it says stipend in the it said it, it says it is a stipend if it is a stipend, do we have a right to vote no next year to eliminate it? I don't know. Uh, I, this would be an amendment to the bylaws, and so, uh, you know, uh, town council is going to say something. So, good evening, folks. I don't like to say much, but it's still going to need to be funded every year, right? So it's still going to be subject to appropriation. Adding it to the bylaw will create an expectation amongst employees that they will receive it, but you can't pay it if it's not appropriated. So cl uh, clarify that in, in a layman's term. Could we vote next year not to do it if we vote this year to do it? Yes, but when you have it as a bylaw amendment, right, you either don't fund it or you take it out of the, the bylaws, and that, and and that takes time. And that would be a two-thirds vote? No, it's a general bylaw, so it would only be a majority vote. Okay. Uh, let we, me just let me just uh, so it would be required to be in the budget every year the appropriation is ultimately what it would be and town meeting could choose not to fund those stipends okay okay uh, unfortunately we don't have a personnel board and we're talking on we don't have turnover we do have turnover and uh, so forth it would be nice if we had more quantifiable data about if we are, if we do have turnover, if our pay is not uh, uh, c competitive with other towns, I don't know that. We may okay. be paying underpaid, we may be overpaid. I would, I would suggest that we postpone this indefinitely <laughs> and, and get some more quantifiable data. All right, so okay. your time is up, but you did make a motion to Thank postpone you. indefinitely. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, we, we, we might be able to get away. We were, I think we were very close to actually just taking a vote. Um, uh, so is there any further debate on the main motion before I get to the postpone indefinitely? Because it's not, not been seconded yet, and I haven't asked for it. I guess I'm just, there's been a second. So the motion is now to postpone indefinitely, uh, and we all know what that means. We can continue to debate uh, the underlying motion if we choose. So, is there any uh, is there any debate uh, on the motion to postpone indefinitely? 
Mr. Moderator, I call the question. Oh, thank God. Uh, there's, there, there, <laughs> there's a motion to, to, to move the previous question, which means we want to end debate on the motion to postpone indefinitely. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Uh, the ayes have it. Debate is over. Uh, the motion to postpone indefinitely is before us. All those in favor. Okay. Let me make sure. Uh, I know that we've been through this a few times, but a yes vote uh, will kill this motion and we're done. Oh, we'll kill the motion. If we vote uh, no, we will continue to debate this uh, uh, and, and take a, another vote on it later. Okay? All those in favor of postponing indefinitely say aye. 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 All those opposed to postponing indefinitely say no. The ayes have it. The motion is postponed indefinitely. Uh, that is the last article on the warrant. Uh, there being no other business before us, I am calling the meeting adjourned. Thank you all for your participation. You don't need no stinky motion to adjourn. I'm not going to wait.